Are you ready for some football? Ah! When the Houston Oilers faced the Buffalo Bills in a playoff game last January, this third quarter interception return for a touchdown gave the Oilers a 32-point lead. Then history was made. It was the greatest comeback victory in NFL history. And tonight in Buffalo, the Oilers are back in town in what may be the benchmark game of the season for the Oilers and quarterback Warren Moose. Well, we look at this as a big game, one, because we're one and three, two, because we're going to Buffalo and playing against one of the better teams in the AFC. And then the fact that what happened last year, you, you put that into the mix, and uh, all of a sudden we've got a great challenge in front of us. And if we can't get up for this football game, there's no football game to get up for. The Houston Oilers get another shot at the Buffalo Bills on ABC's Monday Night Football. All right, on three. One, two, three. Big hit! Oh, oh, oh. Players moving out, players moving in, all in the name of the old big skin. Run, 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 but you sure can't hide. Well, the only ones talking buffalo coming back are the coaches. And it seems everybody is a believer, but the others, others. Demonstration, celebration, aggravation, concentration, humiliation. Oh, 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 oh. And the Stadium in Orchard Park just outside Buffalo, New York on a very cool autumn Western New York evening. The temperature in the 40s expected to go to the 30s as the Houston Oilers take on the Buffalo Bills. Hello again, everyone. Frank Gifford, Val Michaels, and Dan Deardorf. Happy you're with us. An important AFC matchup tonight. The Buffalo Bills coming in at 3-1. They need a win tonight to stay with Miami on top of the AFC Eastern Division. But more importantly, they feel they need a Buffalo Bills type of win. They have not played well on either side of the ball. They'd like to change that tonight. Meanwhile, the Houston Oilers come in one and three in a year in which they made changes they thought would finally get them through the playoffs and into the Super Bowl, such has not been the case. And they return, if you will, to the scene of their crime, that playoff loss when they blew a 32-point lead right here against the Bills at Rich Stadium. And, Al, if you have followed the Houston Oilers since that time at times they have resembled more a soap opera than a football team especially over the last couple of weeks Frank they've really been through the uh, I guess triple whammy portion of the schedule in their last game 15 days ago they were beaten by the Rams they played horribly on both sides of the ball were defeated 28 to 13 then the Jack Pardee rumors started again would he keep his job well he is still here and Bud Adams the owner gave him the old vote of confidence then they had to worry about preparing for this game and think back to last year's disaster. Strangely enough, even if they lose tonight, 
They are still in contention in the AFC Central because the rest of their schedule, we'll get into that later, is very soft. But they need to play well to prove to themselves they're a contending team, and they need a good performance tonight from quarterback Warren Moon, who has been erratic and inconsistent through the first quarter of the season. And he leads the Oilers into Buffalo, where the Buffalo Bills try to keep pace with Miami. Dan with a mark of 3-1 and one coming off their win against the Giants last week. And Al, as you and I have been talking about, 3-1 and one and not really playing all that well, which really doesn't bode well for the team's that the Bills have to play for the rest of this season because you know it won't last. Here's an offensive team, and we all know how explosive it is, has only scored 81 points in four games, and, and 20 points a game is way below average for the Bills. Now you take a look at how they're looking at tonight's game. They know that their chief competitor in this division is Miami. Dan Marino's already had an operation on his Achilles tendon. He's out for the year. You know what that'll do to Miami. Here they have a chance to, tonight to deal a serious setback to the Oilers, putting them at one and four. This is a really nice setting for the Buffalo Bills and what they can do to some other teams in the AFC. And they're set to explode. This is a team that hasn't even scored a rushing touchdown here yet in 1993. Look for them to run the ball effectively tonight. Any way you dissect the Buffalo Bills, they are still the most talented team in the AFC. And before a big crowd at Rick Stadium in Buffalo, but not quite a sellout crowd, and thus one of the rare times a game is blacked out in western New York. It is a crisp, clear night. Temperature close to the 50-degree mark after a spectacular autumn day. And Al Del Greco will send it down to the Buffalo Bills. So Houston kicks off. Russell Copeland and Kenneth Davis back to receive for Buffalo. And underway from Rick Stadium with a touchback, which is nothing new in the NFL this year. More and more of them. The Buffalo Bills take over at the 20-yard line. Jim Kelly throwing for seven touchdowns and has had five picks, guided them on a march in the fourth quarter to their win over the Giants last Sunday night. Thurman Thomas and Carwell Gardner in the backfield. Beebe and Reed, the wideouts, and Metzelars is the tight end. And then up front, Fina taking the spot Normally occupied by Wolford now in Indianapolis. Richard Hull in the middle came back last week. He'd been hurt. Davis and Howard the House Ballard at right tackle. You mentioned the weather tonight, and I know Buffalo gets more than its fair share of criticism for the weather. This is an absolutely perfect night for the players. The wind is relatively calm, and the temperature is very nice. And our referee Tom White is trying to explain to Jack Hardy and that's Kevin Gilbride the offensive coordinator on the right what's going on and Al if you've got a clue you're one step ahead of me. I wonder if they might be having phone problems uh, this early even. Kevin McBride pointed to the other side of the field if they lose their phones of course the other team has to lose theirs also. Uh, you might be right Frank. White's on his way over here to the Buffalo sideline to talk to Marv. It has that look and White will tell us in a minute. As Buffalo awaits their first play at the 20-yard line, it's about the only way to slow down the Buffalo hurry-up. It doesn't affect Buffalo as much as other teams. There's a problem with the phones on the Buffalo coaching staff. Excuse me, with the Houston coaching staff. All the phones will be shut down until they are corrected. We'll play with it the way it is. First down. Of course, Tim Kelly calls his plays most of the time anyway, and uh, so it will affect them a lot less than it will Houston. He hadn't been calling his plays this season until last week. First and 10. Buffalo from the 20, and they'll go right to the air, and Kelly nearly gets sacked, and then the pass is incomplete. It would have been a very minimal game. Pete Metzelars, the tight end, the intended receiver, and then Sean Jones, exultant after the first play. And let's take a look at that Houston defensive line. A very good one. Fuller, Childress, the perennial All-Pro, Lee Williams, and Jones. Robinson, Al Smith, and Joe Bowden at right outside linebacker. The Wilbur Marshall is in uniform will play. Dishman and Jackson are the corners. McDowell and Robertson are the safeties. On second and ten, Thurman Thomas picks up two before Lee Williams makes the tackle. So we mentioned that Wilbur Marshall will see action tonight. He has been bothered with knee and ankle injuries. There's a flag down on the last play. No, I, I, what, Wilbur Marshall played on that last play. Uh, they dropped the flag and picked it up, but Wilbur was in on that last play. And now comes out on third down and eight. 
as Andre Reed goes in motion. And Kelly out of the shotgun throws, and BB was there, but he was out of bounds. And so it will be fourth down and 10. And one of the problems with the hurry up is that when you hurry up and don't pick up a first down, you don't take very much time off the clock. And 45 seconds into the game, Houston will get the football. And you saw Kelly go right at Steve Jackson, who is replacing an injured Daryl Lewis over that right cornerback position. And I would imagine Steve Jackson, who's had his share of injuries, is going to draw a lot of Buffalo attention tonight in the passing game. Here's Chris Moore to punt. Beauty. 53 yard kick and a Ooh. fair catch called for by Willie Drury. So a beauty for Moore. And how often will you see a fair catch called for in a 53 yard boot? Oh, he put some altitude on that one. Here is Warren Moon, and those last two numbers tell the story four TDs and eight picks in four games and completing only 56% of his passes. From the run and shoot, you use one running back, and that's Lorenzo White. Then the wide outs are Jeffrey Slaughter, Leonard Harris replacing the injured Curtis Duncan and Gibbons. Donnelly Munchak is back. He's been hurt. Matthews as good as anybody in the league at center. Dawson and Williams. First down from the 27-yard line, and they begin with Lorenzo White to the short side of the field, and he picks up a yard and a half and he's tackled by Jeff Wright. Now, from time to time, Buffalo will look like this, but of course, against the run and shoot, they'll be varying their defense a lot tonight. Barnett, Wright, and Bruce Smith, the perennial All-Pro. Bennett, Patton, and Maddox in the middle, and Tally, the other outside backer. Mickey Washington at one corner, replacing the injured J.D. Williams with Odoms at the other. Henry Jones, a brilliant safety, and Kelso, the free safety. Matt Darby and Thomas Smith now come in in the dime package. So you've got six defensive backs. And basically a 4-1-6 on second down and eight. They give it to Lorenzo White. There's a lot of room in the middle. And he picks up the first down, takes it out to the 43-yard line. And what you're looking at right there is the only way the Oilers could win this game tonight. It's running the football more effectively than they have in the past. And that needs an active Lorenzo White. Last game against the Rams was his best game of the year so far a tremendous job of blocking by the offensive line it's been banged up it has not been very effective they have new people and that's as good a start as Kevin Gilbride there their offensive coordinator could have hoped for on a running play that's White's longest gain of the year 14 yards he comes in averaging only 3.2 White again and he picks up about 2.2, just over the 45-yard line. It'll be second and eight. Lorenzo White had over 1,200 yards rushing a year ago, but this year he came in very late, only about a week before the season started, their opening game of, of the season. And it really, the first four games have been kind of a training camp for him. They say he's a slow starter, and he, if he's going to play back to what he did a year ago, this could be the beginning of it tonight. Second and eight at the 45. Three minutes into the game, no score. Bills rush four and is batted and is still alive. It is picked off by the Buffalo Bills. It is Cornelius Bennett. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Corny uh -oh. Cole. <laughs> A good fake by Bennett. Bruce Smith came in from the back side. I'm not sure if he got a hand on the ball or not, or if it just slipped out of the hands of Warren Moon. Let's take a look at this. Now, there's Bruce Smith. He's coming in from Moon's blind side, and he gets there well after the fact that, well after the fact that Warren releases it. This will give us more of a vantage point to the right, and that is really just a tremendous play. It gets batted on the inside. Bennett hits it, and then intercepts it, and here goes the long one. And Kelly hits the home run for Don Beebe. Whoa, what a start. Wow. It was Jeff Wright who knocked that ball up in the air for Bennett to make the interception to set up the first pass of the series, a touchdown to Don Beebe. How's that for wasting no time? Mm. That's your hurry up offense. He just ran by an Oiler defender who I think was expecting help on the outside. Good protection for Kelly. 
wide open is BB. Chris Dishman was the cornerback who appeared to be the closest guy to BB. He was trailing him by a good three yards. And he had to be looking to turn him over to somebody. Dishman, good man for man cover. Steve Christie with the extra point. So the turnover off the volleyball interception. Touchdown BB, 7-0 Buffalo. When you end up blocking a pass, it's because you lay out. Watch Cornelius Bennett stay out here. Watch Jeff Wright, the man to his right, tip the ball. Bennett right here stops rushing. He's going to wait. He hits it with his left. There's Wright, who hits it with his left. Back to Bennett. And David Williams, the tackle in front of him, it doesn't even know all this is going on. But it was really Cornelius Bennett a good five, six yards away from Warren Moon. Timed his jump just right and blocked the ball and ended up with the pick. Steve Christie kicks off and he bounces one down to the five yard line. This is John Henry Mills. And he gets bumped out of bounds. And the Houston Oilers down by seven will take over as ABC's Monday Night Football is being brought to you by Miller Lite. Great taste, less filling. Can your beer do this? Hewlett Packer, Desk Jet, and Laser Jet printed. Oldsmobile. And Lay's Potato Chips, the proud sponsor of the opening video of The Temptation. Bet you can't eat just one. At the 28-yard line. First down, the Houston Oilers. With Moon now having thrown four touchdowns and nine interceptions. And he has to pack it in. And slides to a halt up at the 32-yard line. Bennett will get credit for the tackle. After a four-yard pickup, it'll be second down and six. Boy, was he being chased down from behind by this guy, Cornelius Bennett. First, he puts on the pass rush. Pretty effectively blocked by Williams. Run out of the play, but look at the burst. Look at him close the ground on Warren Moon. And I don't know if Warren sensed he was coming from behind. He certainly saw a tally out front. Bennett stung a little bit by some criticism by some of the talk shows here in Buffalo having maybe his best year as a Buffalo Bill and that's saying something one of the premier players in the NFL playing right now as a down lineman whether he can come on the pass rush or he can drop into the coverage Blake clock went all the way down to zero Bruce Smith was informing us of that number 78 play a game Houston five yards to second down it's very important right now for the Oilers to get themselves together. They had a play, a freak play happened to them, and they got to come back and go with their game plan. They, I'm sure, set out to run the football. They got to go back to it. Uh, they were really stunned quickly, and the team that comes in one and three, uh, as they do, they could lose it very quickly in a game like this. They got to get control of it. Second and 13. 10 21 to go in the opening quarter. It's 7 to nothing Buffalo. Here comes Smith. Moon retrieves, gets off the pass to Lorenzo White. 
and he is forced out of bounds at about the 30-yard line by Darrell Talley. See a lot of different kinds of defenses against the run-and-shoot offense of the Houston Oilers. Right now, the Bills are going with Bruce Smith and Jeff Wright as the only down lineman, and they use Cornelius Bennett as a down lineman where he can either get in the pass rush or drop off. Here comes Bruce Smith from the right side with amazing speed and agility for a man his size. Now Kevin Donnelly, the left tackle, turned his shoulders awful early. He can't make a habit of doing that, or it's going to be a long evening for him. Third and ten. Buffalo rushing four. Moon gets it to White. He seeks that first down. It's very close. Now he makes the tackle, and it appears he's going to get a nice spot. And that will be a first down for the Oilers off third and long. This is what they need from White. Good runner, good on the draw play. Good quick lateral movement on the part of Lorenzo White out of the backfield. An excellent receiver with almost 60 receptions a year ago. Big part of their offense. And that might be the biggest first down they've had all year. <laughs> they needed that badly. They're already down by seven. In a place that will always haunt them, at least those who remain on this team through the years. As Moon on first down, throws it over the middle, and that's picked off by Odoms at the 32-yard line. And Nate Odoms is out of bounds at the 50, and that's already two picks off Warren Moon. Tried to float it downfield to Webster Slaughter. Nate Odom trotted by us tonight, warming up, said, watch me this evening. I don't know if he had a premonition or not, but Moon looking at Slaughter all the way. The ball hangs on him, and there comes Nate. Nice little one-handed interception. Bad start for the Orleans. Buffalo leads 7-0. That's either the time left in the first quarter or a number that the Oilers are calling right now. <laughs> okay, now that, you know, they've had a couple of things go really bad for them already tonight. And for a team that's struggling like they are, it can set something pretty terrible off for them. Philly on first down from the 50. And he if he completes it, it is a live football, and now the officials are saying it is dead at the 41-yard line. And the other official is coming in and saying incomplete. He was well, juggling the ball, and for one official, it looked like he was down on, well, on the contact, but the other official saw it from another angle. And in either event. Houston will not get the ball. One official said he was down by contact. The other said incomplete pass. Ruling on the field. Incomplete pass. He never had possession of the ball. Second down. And he is bobbling the ball. Don never Beebe. Controls it. Beebe wrapped up by Dishman. Second and 10. 9-0-1 to go. Opening quarter. 
Marv Levy, oldest coach in the league at the age of 65, took over midway through the 1986 season. Thurman Thomas, who has led the league in yards from scrimmage, and that means rushing and receiving combined over the last four years. An NFL record is tackled by Sean Jones. And Thurman Thomas just keeps rolling along now in his sixth year. And uh, I'll tell you what, another year like the prior four, and he's going to wrap up Canton. You've, you've got that straight. Here they go again without a huddle. Oh, Howard Ballard, the right tackle move. I think we'll get a false start on Buffalo here. Buddy Ryan. Late of the Bears, late of the Eagles. Now has found a home in Houston. Start. Number 75 offense moving prior to the snap. Five yards, still third down. There's Howard Ballard, the closest offensive lineman to us. Watch him move. That's all it takes. His hand leaves the ground, but even if it wouldn't have, that's still a false start. Great shoulders, quick to point it out. Kelly trying to get it to BB, and it's broken up by Steve Jackson as a marker down. Marker down all the way down to the 34-yard line. Side judge made the ruling. It's going to go against Buffalo. And Houston will decline it. Offensive pass interference, number 82. Penalty is declined. Result of the play is fourth down. BB going back against Steve Jackson, where they'd like to work tonight. Jackson filling in for the injured Darrell Lewis. Now watch him push off. And now breaks it back to the outside, draws the flag. Houston declines, and we'll get the punt. Chris Moore. Line of scrimmage is the 49-yard line, and this is a high-floating kick. And Drury calls for a fair catch and makes it at the 28-yard line, so just a 23-yard kick. As the Houston Oilers take over, 8 away to go on the quarter, 7-0 Buffalo. Fired on the okay. floor. Right. Next day. The Goodyear blimp Spirit of Akron has made the short trip up from northeastern Ohio and providing the scenics here tonight on a uh, sparkling night, a clear night in Buffalo. Houston has the ball. The Bills on top seven to nothing on a Kelly to BB pass following a Bennett interception. The Oilers with Moon giving to White from the 29 on first down. And Lorenzo White picks up a little more than three. He is tackled by Tally. Houston uh, has had the ball twice tonight, and both possessions have culminated with interceptions. Kevin Gilbride, the offensive coordinator. 
wild scene in Houston. I mean, you've got an, an offensive coordinator and a defensive coordinator who really don't talk to each other very much. Buddy Ryan on the other side of the ball. Well, who blames Kevin Gilbride? The defensive coordinator makes fun of your offense. Yeah. I, you can see where he's a little upset. And second and six. Maybe that's why he makes fun of it. Yep. Moon looking like a pinball in a machine. Mickey Washington on the corner blitz came in and helps to break up the play along with Mike Lodish. Well, the corner blitz is so effective against the run and shoot. There are no tight ends. And you bring a safety or a cornerback, and you have six of them in the coverage the Bills are providing tonight. And you're in so tight, your angle is so tight to the quarterback. If you don't get picked up, you don't get bumped, you're going to get to that quarterback so quickly. Jeff right there with an equipment change on the sidelines. His shoulder pads must have broken somehow. And that's the reason Lodish was in there, and Lodish part of that sack. Third and 14. And Moon nearly goes down again, but he breaks away, and then finally Bennett wraps him up at the 12-yard line. Marcus Patton was the guy who almost sacked him, number 53, and then Bennett goes back and takes care of him. I think we'll call Bennett's celebration after that the tuning fork. He's flat on his back and uh, doing the vibrations, but right now the vibrations are the vibrations of the crumbling Oiler offense. Uh, Bad you start. Get the feel of why Warren Moon's numbers are so off thus far in the season. He's been scrambling for his life out there thus far here in the first quarter. Greg Montgomery led the league in average per punt last year. Booms this one all the way down to the 33. Russell Copeland brings it back to the 42-yard line. That is a 54-yard kick. Spencer Tillman makes the tackle. Buffalo has it, 6.34 to go in the opening quarter. Seven to nothing, Bill. Okay. Tomorrow night, David Caruso stars in the number one drama of the new season. Find out why America's made NYPD Blue television's newest sensation. NYPD Blue tomorrow, right here on ABC. We saw Jeff Wright changing his jersey. The reason was the officials deemed that he had Vaseline on his shoulders, and he was a little too slick for what is... Is that why? Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah I don't think I've ever seen a defensive lineman uh, call for that. Yeah, normally offensive linemen do it to keep the defensive guys from grabbing them. I guess grabbing goes both ways. There's Thomas going nowhere on first down. Eddie Robinson, the second-year linebacker out of Alabama State, makes the tackle. Kelly, meanwhile, uh, off to an inauspicious start in a statistical sense. Jim is one of his first five, but that one was the 34-yard touchdown pass to Don Beebe. Second and ten. Kelly wobbles one. Flags are down. Somehow the ball got into BB, and they're saying incomplete, and he flagged down anyway. Well, BB and Dishman got into it again. And BB certainly wasn't where Jim Kelly expected him to be because he threw the ball. And look, once again, 
Don Beebe looks like he's going to be called for interference. Fishman uh, just set himself up in front of Beebe, and Beebe just ran right into him. I don't know whether that's like what they're going to call or not. Dishman positioned himself perfectly. Not showing a whole lot of respect for Beebe's speed. All he has to do is play back the earlier touchdown, and he will understand that Beebe has got some blazing speed. Well, it's almost like setting yourself in a defensive position to take a charge in basketball. If you're a defensive back and you're there. Offensive pass interference, number 82. Penalty is declined. Third down. If you've established position, the receiver's got to run around you. He's he can't initiate the contact. Well, and not I, like this. And no. he, he just a little out move and runs right into Dishman, <laughs> pushes off. Yeah, that's, that's official a good throws call. the flag, and it was a good positioning by Dishman. Darn right. That's a good call by the official. And it's third down and ten now at the 43-yard line. Seven nothing Buffalo. <laughs> Kelly. Everybody covered. That's a coverage sack, and the credit will go to Lee Williams. So the secondary does its job, and then Williams finally gets to Kelly, and Houston forces a Buffalo kick. Buffalo has had Houston on the ropes here, and has really not taken advantage of it. The one quick score to Beebe. Nobody open anywhere, and Jim Kelly is sacked, and Buffalo has to punt, and as poorly as Houston has played offensively, trailing 7-0 here is a blessing. Moore's kick, 42 yards, fielded by Drury. And he's back out to the 26, tackled by Marcus Patton. 5-41 remaining first quarter in Buffalo. Still 7-0 Bill. Is that... Uh, One of the premier special teams players in the league is Steve Tasker of the Bills. Watch this, he misses the tackle, stays in the play, misses the entire pile again. When you're a special teams maven like he is, you're a couple bubbles off center. And he's been to what, four <laughs> Pro Bowls, a special teamer. He actually yes. uh, was a ninth round draft pick of uh, Houston. Back out, of North, out of Northwest. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Not the type of behavior that you expect from a Wildcat. But he was the MVP of the Pro Bowl last year. First down, Oilers at the 26. It's the fourth time they've had the ball. And here's White, and he's hit by Smith, and he's tackling for a loss. And the Oilers tonight, in their three possessions, the first ended with an interception, the second ended with an interception, the third ended fourth and 25, and this one begins with a two-yard loss. And there it is. And you would normally say, well, there's no way you lift a Warren Moon. But there's a precedent here, as many of you know, certainly those of you who cover the Oilers or follow them. Three weeks ago in San Diego, he was lifted. He takes the inside. Donnelly really doesn't have any chance of keeping him out of that middle. Bruce Smith, virtually impossible to block all by yourself. So he is having a great year. Oh. Second and 12. Moon throws. That's tipped, and it's incomplete. Webster Slaughter had it glance off his fingertips. Your best hope with Smith is kind of what happened on his last rush right there, where you hope you can route him inside 
that he runs into traffic, that he runs into the pile, and that stops him because one-on-one, -on -one, Frank, how are you going to do it? I know, and you have a run-and-shoot offense with no tight end. You can't line up a tight end over there and force him into the gap or outside, and uh, he is at an angle at the quarterback that is really disruptive. Mike Munchak uh, normally in at that left guard position. He's out right now. Eric Norgard, number 64, is taking his place. Munchak has been hurt, did start the game, but out now, third and 12. And Moon has an open man, and he hits Ernest Givens on the far sideline. On third and long, they're able to convert. And one of the few times Moon dropped back into the pocket and had time to get the ball downfield. Quarterback takes so much abuse for what actually happens up on that offensive line, and he has been running for his life. Look, he had the protection in Givens splitting that Buffalo zone and Moon right on target. He can, with such an accurate passer, boy, that was close as to whether he was in or out, but a well-delivered ball by Warren Moon. Mickey Washington had the coverage that time. First down from the 45. Look out. Moon avoids the sack, gets it away, incomplete. And Mickey Washington that time, again on that corner blitz, had a sack earlier, and that time almost got him again. Well, it's a, it's a blitz that has hurt the Oilers all year. They kind of adjusted to it a little bit better in their game against the Rams, but there is just nobody left to block. The corner reads, the back releasing. Once the back is gone, there's Munchak on the sidelines. Once the, once the back is gone, there is nobody left. All the linemen are covered off. They're busy blocking somebody else, and your quarterback is going to take a pounding if it's not a quickly released pass. Washington in there again quickly. He's the man replacing the normal starter, James Williams, who's hurt. Draw for White, and he picks up about three before he's tackled by Marcus Patton and Bruce Smith. And another third and long now for the Oilers with 4.15 to go in the opening quarter, 7-0 Buffalo. One of the great offensive linemen in the NFL just can't seem to overcome the fact he's got chronically bad knees. And I know he's disappointed, and Lorenzo White would certainly like to have Mike Munchak in the game. He's only had three workouts yep. this week. He's missed a couple of games, and they desperately miss him. And the word from the Oiler bench is his knees are hurting, and he will not return to this game unless they run out of people. There's an emergency. Third down and eight. Moon throws, and the catch is made at the 46-yard line by Leonard Harris. However, he is a little short of the first down. Good pickup on the safety blitz. Henry Jones was coming that time for Buffalo inside. Well, what a great play by Bruce Matthews, the center. He's, he's working inside, and you're right, Frank. He comes all the way out there to pick up Henry Jones. The Oilers, at least for the moment, are huddling as if they'll go for it. What will happen here from time to time is you're trying to draw the opposition offside. Let's see. It's fourth down and a yard at the 45. The play clock is down to five, and they're going for it. And here's White, and he gets it to the 43-yard line. So Pardee gambles and wins that one. Houston had been 0 for 4 on fourth down this season. So much for the run and shoot not being effective on short yardage, fourth and short, third and short. No tight end, of course. That's the criticism you get. You can't run the ball in short yardage. Well, Lorenzo White plants the outside foot, picks up a good trap block, breaks inside, gets the first down. First and ten. Bruce Smith getting a breather on the sideline. Mark Pike spills him, number 94. And Moon throws, and oh, Gibbons can't make the catch and really takes a smack. There's a flag down. Matt Garvey is the man. On a pop that you could hear in North Tonawanda. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's go. Darby, one of those six backs in the Buffalo defensive scheme. They've been playing straight zone except for the blitz. They're going to get a personal foul. Are they saying he used a forearm? It I think everyone in the NFL is aware of the fact that personal foul. Unnecessary roughness, number 53, 15 yards in the previous spot, first down. He says uh, Tom White 53, he means 43. 53 is Marcus Patton, but 43, Matt Darby is the player who's called. Let's watch it at regular speed. Listen to this and watch it. Moon is pump fake right here, delivers the ball. Darby comes a long way to make the hit. <laughs> 
Givens gets right back into the game. At the 28-yard line on first down. Moon, Slaughter. You know, the funny thing about the Oilers is the, the receivers and the run and shooters small and Buddy Ryan even derided them, but they are among the most durable receivers in the National Football League. They and bounce. Gibbons <laughs> proved it right there. They do bounce well. <laughs> They're amazing. They're 165 pounds. You got Leonard Harris, 165. It's incredible. Well, there they are. Rice, 95 straight games, and Sharp, 85. Then you've got Gibbons and Jeffries, two of the Oilers, third and fourth in terms of consecutive starts. Well, Jeffrey's right up there. He's a 200-pounder. He's the only one they have with any size. And Curtis Duncan was close to being on that list until he hurt his foot a couple of weeks back. Moon hitting Jeffries, and Jeffries, I believe, has the first down and does because they're going to spot it at the 17-yard line. And Houston, the last couple of plays, has been a lot more effective at, at picking up the Buffalo Blitz. It's obvious that Walt Corey, the defensive coordinator of the Bills, is going to send people after Warren Moon. Moon's a quarterback right now who's a little bit back on his heels, a little unsure of his performance, and he's been getting some good blitz pickups here. And a result? Completions. Even with six backs, you send a couple of them, and you're going to get a man-for-man -man situation. That time, Odom's on Jeffries. They get the completion. There's a lot of people in the box there for Buffalo. From the 17-yard line, Moon to the end zone and wide open for a touchdown to Leonard Harris. That's blown coverage there. But Buffalo was, again, thinking blitz. They had them all up there, Dan. You're so right. They brought them all in. Good protection that time for Warren Moon. They protect him, give him time. He's about as accurate as you're going to find around the league. So early in the drive, they convert a third and long. Then they go for it on fourth and one and make that, and it pays off with a touchdown. Look at that protection, though. No pressure. Gets to sit back, look it over. But still, Harris comes free. You used the word blown in your original description, and that is still the best word I can think of. Nobody anywhere near Harris. So the Oilers, who had looked absolutely horrid on their first three possessions, Mark 75 yards. Al Del Greco for the point after. Montgomery puts it down. There's a marker down. So for the moment, it's still 7 6, and we'll see about the call. Buffalo's going to look back at the first few minutes of this game, and they should have had a 14 or 21 point lead. And they didn't get it. Now it's going to go against uh, Houston. So as Gilbride goes over things with Moon, Del Greco will attempt another extra point. All start. Left tackle on the offense, five yards, replayed his drive. Al Del Greco, the kicker, he uh, became a father this week, his wife giving birth. They named the child Derek after what you see on the helmet, the Oiler logo. No. Absolutely. Come on. Yes, sir. You made that up. No, sir. We don't make things up on Monday night, do we? <laughs> Derek Del Greco after the Derek on the side of the helmet. You got it. Imagine if he played for, I don't know, the Bears or whatever. You get a little defensive about that. Use the imagination. <laughs> of course, we don't make things up on Monday night. Absolutely not. He is a kicker. What do you expect? A little weird. Let's go ahead and take a look, if we could, at Houston's touchdown. And, and I think we'll get an idea of what might have happened uh, in that blown coverage. Take a look. This is Leonard Harris right here, and this is Henry Jones. Watch Jones come off, and I'm not sure who was right and who was wrong, but watch Jones come off his coverage right here when the outside receiver makes his move to the inside. And right there, there are two Buffalo Bills covering the same guy, and nobody's covering Leonard Harris. And Orlando that's, coming over from yeah. free safety, not even close to it. No, and that's not his uh, that's not his play, not from clear from the no. inside. First touchdown of the season for Leonard Harris. We have a minute eight to go in the quarter. Copeland back to receive. Along with Kenneth Davis and Del Greco. 
Sends it to the two-yard line. Kenneth Davis, who is Thurman Thomas's backup at running back, gets hit by Lathan and then tackled up at the 13-yard line. Jim Kelly and the Bills, you know, despite the fact they're 3-1, and one, Kelly's been erratic this year. Uh, case in point, last week they beat the Giants. He led them to their touchdown march when he had to. Prior to that, the only touchdown they had scored in that game was an 85-yard interception return by Henry Jones. You know, we talk about the problems with Moon and Kelly. Kelly has been sacked 14 times in the first four games of the season, only 20 all of last year. The same holds to with Warren Moon. He was sacked 13, 12 times coming into the night of four games. I mean, they have been struggling for their lives with their offensive lines. Thomas juggles it. And after we grasping it, takes it out to the 21-yard line in the final minute of the first quarter. Robertson and Childress converge on the tackle. And we have an injured Oiler. Is that Wilbur? It sure is. is. Yep. That's Wilbur Marshall, who's just been nursing all sorts of injuries, a bad knee, a, a bad ankle that's really been the biggest source of his concern and just hasn't been healthy ever since he joined the Oilers in that much celebrated debacle with the Washington Redskins as far as who offered him a contract who didn't who was going to honor it and finally had to be settled by the commissioner Paul Tagliabue. He had arthroscopic surgery just before the season started going back to August the 6th and then he just was getting healthy from that and he came back against the Rams two weeks ago and sprained his ankle and has been in and out of the lineup tonight. I mean, this is not a sight that you normally see in Wilbur's career. He's been a remarkably durable player, and of course, he goes way back with Buddy Ryan, back to their days with the Chicago Bears, the glory days in the mid-'80s when they won a Super Bowl. Wilbur was uh, part of just an awesome linebacking crew, Mike Singletary in the middle, Otis Wilson mm -hmm. on the other side when the 46 defense of Buddy Ryan was the rage in the NFL. Meanwhile, on the other sideline, Thurman Thomas has come over. He uh, limped off momentarily. He got up very slowly. He was uh, reaching for the back of his right leg and the right uh, calf region. Thurman coming off a 122 yard effort, a tremendous effort against the Giants last Sunday night. He's the difference in this team offensively when they're going to control the ball and move the ball. Thomas has got to have his night or his day. And he's going to get a break because Kenneth Davis is in the backfield when play resumes. Wilbur doesn't appear to be all that eager to put a lot of weight on that on that leg. And there is Thurman Thomas who has been uh, not only a tremendous back oh. throughout his career but extremely durable. And uh, on the subject of injuries, well, you all know Dan Marino, and it was confirmed today, as uh, Dan mentioned at the top, uh, out for the season. Steve Entman of Indy again out for the year. Wendell Davis of Chicago out for the year. John Offerdahl, the Dolphin linebacker, Rob Moore of the Jets, out about a month. And then Drew Bledsoe was hurt. We don't know about him as New England plays Houston next Sunday. John Fries of San Diego suffered a concussion. Davis is in the game. It's second down and short. And it's Davis, uh, about as good a backup running back as you'll find in the league, Kenneth taking Davis it up to the 23-yard line. Thurman Thomas had a, almost a 1,500-yard rushing season, as we look at Wilbur Marshall, a, a year ago. And Ken Davis just backing him up, rushed for over 600 yards. And the Thurman's jersey right there on the corner. Now, that's a, there's a jersey of a guy who works for a living. That 3-4 uh, that has been grabbed and yanked and stretched and pulled. And, so has just about every major body part with Thurman Thomas. There's a guy who uh, brings his lunch bucket and works for a little. You know, he works so hard for the Bills. You go back to when he was playing at Oklahoma State. He was carrying the ball 300 times a year. I and mean, this guy's been doing that not only in now in his sixth year as a pro, but he was doing it at Oklahoma State. A big workhorse there. Second round draft choice in 88. They work on Marshall. Waning seconds of the period now. First down at the 23 yard line, and Kenneth Davis will end the quarter with about a five yard gain up to the 28. He's tackled by McDowell, and that's the end of the first quarter. The game is tied 7 7, and we'll return with the second quarter of Monday Night Football.
after this commercial message and a word from our ABC stations. Thomas has returned to the game. Okay. Always returns. We go to the second quarter. Al Michaels, Frank Gifford, and Dan Deerdorf with about uh, 75,000 looking on at Rich Stadium. Game tied 7 7. And it is second down and six for the Buffalo Bills at their own 27 yard line. Thurman Thomas is back in the game. Oh! And the pass is caught by Reed up at the 40 yard line. And that's a first down for Andre Reed. Stopped by Dishman and Robertson. And let's take a look at the numbers through the first 15 minutes of this fray. And you better look quickly with this hurry up offense. We'll give you a quick scan. <laughs> Time of possession. That's the one that really flares out at you. Well, the turnover. Two turnovers, and that resulted in the oh. touchdown. Here look. is Thurman Thomas breaking loose, taking it down to the Houston 35 yard line. That's so pretty. 25 yard game. Always under control, always with the power if he needs it. And he does not take the big shot. He slides, he slips. He runs it totally different than Jimmy Brown, but much like Jimmy Brown in that respect, you hardly ever get a shot at him. The hips are moving all the time, thinking all the time, using that block. Even if he doesn't get the block, he's using the man in front of him. 25 yard game, longest rushing play of the year for Buffalo. Kelly comes this way, hits BB, and he's out of bounds at the 25 yard line, and that's very close to a first down. One of the men they want to get it to more tonight is Andre Reed. They've been wanting to for the past couple of games. There he is. He's, you saw him a moment ago catch only his 11th reception in four games. Now this being the fifth. He got 10. It's a first down from the 25 yard line. Thurman Thomas takes it to the 24. He's tackled there by Lee Williams. One thing I'm sure that didn't escape Jim Kelly's attention the last completion to Don Beebe here on the near side was that Steve Jackson, the corner, was a good 12 yards off of Beebe. Jackson, who's, who's subbing over here on this side, is, is a guy that is going to be a little tentative over there. And let's see how much they go to work. Uh -huh. On second and nine, Kelly simply slings it away. He's going to be he's going to be tentative because he got fried in that comeback. Yeah, but just as you said that, Dan, he had put good coverage on BB. Kelly wanted to go to BB on an out, a zig out, and Jackson was right with him. And Kelly had to come off it and actually throw the ball away. Third and nine at the 24, early second quarter. Game tied 7 7. Even with a hurry up, when you audible, the play clock can tick down, and right now it's at four. And a third and nine. It's Reed with a catch for a touchdown. And 
Give half of that catch to Jim Kelly, reading the defense. When you don't go into the huddle, he had a lot more time to make his changes at the line of the scrimmage, and you saw the, the really good part of that hurry-up offense. Kelly had a lot of time to look at Buddy Ryan's defense. Top of your screen is Reed. Dishman comes up. And Bubba McDowell and Robertson, neither one could get there. We wanted to see that for a long time this year here in Buffalo. Andre Reed and Jim Kelly. Christie for the point after. So two touchdown passes from Jim Kelly. The Bills, oddly, still without a rushing touchdown all season. Reed hauls it in, and the Bills lead by seven. Monday Night Football is being brought to you by American Airlines. Something special in the air. And Nissan. It's time to expect more from a car. Beautiful shot. Rich Stadium. Orchard Park, New York. About a half hour drive. South, southeast of downtown Buffalo. 14 to 7. The Bills on top. Coach Christie sends this one through the end zone. Well, we were in Atlanta a couple of weeks ago and Jerry Glanville was a man on a on a hot seat and uh, well Jack Pardee clearly is a guy as well on a hot seat a lot of people uh, felt that uh, when Bud Adams the owner gave him a vote of confidence uh, a couple of weeks ago some people wanted to recount I don't know in 33 years Houston's had 16 head coaches uh, how comfortable can you feel well I, I think the mandate is clear this is a team that before the season they're talking Super Bowl but Jack has to right this ship not just to mediocrity. This is a team that if it doesn't win nine or ten games and make the playoffs, Jack Pardee is not going to be back. I think you have to assume that. Right. Even though he is signed through next year. And of course it's fashionable for every speculator in the country to start talking about Buddy Ryan eventually taking over. And, but, and, and, the, and the painful part of discussing someone's livelihood, like we're just doing in kind of a cavalier fashion and talking about Jack Pardee, is you're talking about one of the great guys you will ever meet in your entire life in Jack Pardee. Mm -hmm. start. He was a wonderful seven, player seven in this league. Yards, He's been a successful right coach down. everywhere Over he has down. coached. He has won everywhere he has been. But right now, this is the guy who's taking tickets at one of the bigger circuses in the National Football League. I, I cannot recall ever having seen a football team that's dealing with more distractions than are the Houston Oilers right now. First and 15 from the 15 yard line and they give it to White. To be a bit uncavalier, I talked to Bud Adams who owns the team and has owned the team since its inception on the phone earlier today. He said, I've had enough coaching changes in my life. He said, we have some games coming up that I know we can win. So I don't know that he necessarily expects his team to win tonight. This is a tough one, they're an underdog. But when you look at their schedule over the next several weeks, it's pretty soft. 
And there is Buddy Ryan. And I asked Adams directly, I said, could Buddy Ryan ever be a head coach for you? And he said, you know, I'm really just getting to know the man. I haven't known him until now. Second down and 12. And the catch is made by White. And he takes it up to the 27-yard line. And Mark Maddox makes the tackle. You know, Dan said uh, he's having to deal with all these distractions, Dan. I, I don't know that he's even dealing with them. He's almost taken a role of, I'm not going to get involved. I'm going to be above it. I'm going to let it play out. And it's just uh, maybe he should be dealing with them in a more harsh way. You saw the, uh, the graphic illustrating the softness of their schedule. They played some very tough games thus far, or tough opponents anyway, on paper. And it does get easier. Third down and three at the 27-yard line. And Moon fumbles it and then simply has to think about maintaining possession, which he does at the 24-yard line. Yeah, New England and Cincinnati, then a bye, and then what, Cincinnati and Seattle? Uh, mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, that's why, as we said tonight, off times in a situation like this, you'd say it's a critical game for the Oilers, but even if they're one and four, they're only two back in the division with the soft part of the schedule coming up. That was a good snap by Bruce Matthews, the center. It went right into the hands of Warren Moon, and, and Warren just muffed it, wrapped it. On fourth and six, Montgomery's kick. Dangerous. 41 yards, fielded by Copeland, and it was a low line drive that Copeland brings back to the 44 yard line. So near, near midfield, the Bills take possession with 11.06 left in the opening half. This Saturday at noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific, Michigan, Penn State, two teams that have never met. And, of course, with Penn State now in the uh, Big Ten, a big game. And then regional action, those games available. Check your local listings. If you don't like the game being shown in your area, call your cable operator for the pay-per-view options. Those are the games in the second half of our doubleheader this Saturday. Here it is, 14-7. The Bills on top. They start from the 44. The toss to Thomas. He cuts it back. Leaves Marshall in his dust and takes it out to the 46-yard line where Marcus Robertson makes the tackle. Real pressure on the Houston defense now. Letting the Buffalo Bills start at their 44-yard line is a type of a is a type of an offensive start that more often than not they turn into points. And Wilbur is back out on the field for the Oilers, and they're going to need everybody they can uh, they can muster. This is great starting field position for Buffalo. That's Carwell Gardner doing a pirouette, and uh, I guess when Gardner does a pirouette, that's enough to get somebody to jump off. Len Montgomery came across. That was a Winter Olympics move by Gardner. All he needed was skates and Dick Button. Encroachment. Number 94 defense. <laughs> Five yards. Second down. 
Check this out. Al, you put on your tuxedo oh, and call yeah, this. Right. Oh, it's <laughs> it's a body check. I don't know what that is. <laughs> That's all I know about skating. 245 pound pirouette. Kelly going deep and oh. through the hands of BB. Don BB had gotten out in front and couldn't hold it in. BB the fastest of the Bills receivers. And he proved it right there. And he went by Jackson. Watch him just blow by Steve Jackson. Playing a break to the outside. And Don Beebe just rockets past him. Whoa. So close. Well, now we know why Jackson was playing so far off yep. Beebe in that earlier coverage. Beebe just doesn't look that fast. He doesn't seem to have that great burst. He just consistently runs by people. Here's Thomas on third and two. Beautiful to the 42 yard line. One of the reasons I think he's been able to avoid injuries right there. I mean, he knows exactly where everybody is. He's able to sidestep and skitter and dance and dart and all of the rest. Thurman Thomas, who clearly had Norwood's kick been good in the Super Bowl in Tampa following the 1990 season, he and not Otis Anderson would have been the MVP. First and 10. And Kelly's pass is complete, and Bill Brooks, picked up from Indianapolis, the restricted free agent, gets ridden down by Dishman. Looks like Brooks is. I'm glad to see him get up. He was caught in a very awkward position there when Dishman drove him into the ground. It looked like he had his head down, and a pretty good look at flexibility by Billy Brooks in getting crunched and rolled under. Second and seven. There's the play fake that finds time for Kelly, and then also finds an open man. Andre Reed cuts down Buffalo. Good pattern. They're working over against Steve Jackson. Beebe did a fly pattern into the end zone, picked up the attention of two of the Oilers. Andre Reed broke it to the sidelines, broke it back across the middle. He was wide open. Well, you really have to feel good for Andre Reed, who long has been one of the premier receivers in the National Football League, but has always had to make his living running those five and six yard crossing patterns, where every time he catches the ball, he gets pummeled by a linebacker or two strong safeties. And here we get to see him run a couple deeper patterns and look at the success. And it's, uh, it's kind of nice. It's unusual that Reed catches a football and doesn't get hit. Christie for the point after. Yeah, he lives over the middle, and that time he lived over the deep middle. Yep, this makes twice now that Andre Reed has been able to run an upfield pattern. And this is a nice little jump. Now it's time for our regular feature on what's new in the world of sports science and technology. Guys, 300, 300 pounds, easy. Too bad too. Well, he has the jacket on, but he was loosening up. Cody Carlson, the backup quarterback, 
Now I mentioned before Warren Moon was taken out of the game in San Diego when the game was still very much uh, up for grabs. And who knows the way this one's going. And it also throw four interceptions down there too. Drury in the end zone. And remember his last play for the Oilers was just a fumbled snap. Uh, shotgun snap was right to him and uh, Warren just plain dropped it. Sort of, hey, somebody talk to me. What do you want me to run? Warren Can't Moon. Find Kevin Gilbride. Moon will be 37 in uh, November. He had uh, those spectacular seasons in the Canadian Football League. He will be our feature at halftime. And there's a guy who's been featured in the Buffalo offense tonight. Not a, team, Reed. not a team in the league that wouldn't give a lot to have Andre Reid running patterns for them. The consummate team player. We better see a little urgency here on the part of the Oiler offense. They start in the gun, and here comes Bruce Smith into the backfield. And was he induced is the question. Well, he's he moved on Bruce Matthews, but Matthews was just moving back into his position after looking behind him. Centers do that all the time. Encroachment, number 78 defense, five yards to first down. In other words, Bruce Matthews is looking through his legs, and when he returns to a normal football position, it was on that movement. Take a look at Matthews. He's got his head looking back between his legs. He just comes back, and that's enough to draw Smith off sides. Every time they're in shotgun formation, Matthews will do that, so Smith has got to be aware of that. First and five. Play clock is down to three. And the catch was made by Ernest Givens, and that's an eight-yard gain in the first down to the Houston 33-yard line. Washington and Patton converge on the tackle. Good little move on the part of Givens to get that first down. Now I know where he uh, got that dance after touchdowns. <laughs> he put a little by Washington. A little shimmy and a little shake on right there, didn't he? The Oilers could, uh, they're desperately looking for Ernest to do a little touchdown dance. First and 10, 34-yard line, eight and a half minutes to go in the half. Buffalo ahead by 14. Moon throws, catch made by Jeffries, and he's into Buffalo territory. Odom's got hurt, the ball is loose. It's picked up by Buffalo by Mickey Washington. <laughs> You got to make your own breaks. And right now, the Oilers are. Ooh, what a shot Jeffries took. He I took a shot. Odom's got hurt on the play. He's still down. 8 19 remaining now in the half. Henry Jones.
Haywood Jeffries being consoled by his teammates. This is not how to carry the football after you make a reception. He'll switch it over to the left side, but never gets it put away. The big pop by Daryl Talley. Washington pick up the ball, picks it up, but sloppy work by Jeffries after the catch. And here's Thurman Thomas getting a first down on Buffalo's first play following Houston's third turnover. It's almost impossible to do a Buffalo game without calling out Daryl Talley for a big hit. Watch him coming in from the left side right there. The shoulder pad right on the football before Jeffries gets it puts it put away. And once again, a big play by Daryl Talley. Kelly from the 46, here's Thomas again. Finds that seam and picks up four, gets to the 42-yard line. He's tackled there by Eddie Robinson. Seven thirty-five remaining in the half. Marv Levy has guided his team to three consecutive AFC championships. For all anybody wants to talk about, seemingly, are the three Super Bowl losses. Second and six. Kelly throws, hits Carwell Gardner. And the Buffalo fullback takes it to the 20 for a first down. Tackled by Robertson. 22-yard gain. Carwell Gardner's third reception of the season. Seldom ever carries the ball, but he does an effective job back there blocking. Buddy's defense is getting shredded. And I'm not sure that that's a PG conversation going on in his headset. Thomas to the 12. You know, clearly one of the reasons Ryan took the job, but he wanted to be a head coach. He's been a longtime assistant. He goes to Philadelphia for five years, goes back to his farm in Kentucky, and does a little bit of TV work last year. But the only way to get back to becoming a head coach is working it back through the defensive coordinator position, and that's clearly one of the reasons he took this job. Mike Holovac, the uh, general manager, and a guy who's been taking a little bit of heat in Houston as well. Second and two, Thomas, and that's a first down. And we showed Hollaback because when they fired Jim Eddy, they made him the scapegoat for that loss last year, the defensive coordinator. It was Hollaback going back to his relationship with Buddy Ryan when both were with the Jets, who talked to Buddy about going to the Oilers. And of course, uh, with Bud Adams, the owner, and Jack Pardee uh, approving, that's how it happened. As you pointed out earlier, Al, uh, Jack Pardee didn't even know him, hadn't met him casually. First and goal, and Thurman Thomas takes it to the three, and Thurman Thomas in this half has already gained 83 yards. Pena led the way with a block, and Al Smith makes the hit. It's time for the Oilers on defense here to bristle up and raise a fuss. They are just being manhandled, blown off the ball. This offensive line of Buffalo has just really taken control of the line of scrimmage. This quarter alone, 180 to 47. Second and goal. Thurman Thomas. It'll be third and goal from the two. Thomas really a thinking man's runner. He took a he had a thought there for a moment to pop that to the outside, but he could have lost yardage, could have got hurt out there. And turned it back, lowered his head. Got a yard, yard and a half out of it. What did uh, Marv Levy say about him? He said, Thurman, I, I, you can't run a mile running it like it's a 100-yard dash, but I want you to play like it's a 100-yard dash. You just don't have to go the whole mile. Come out whenever you want to come out, and we'll get Kenneth Davis in there. Yep. Third down and goal. Thomas stays in the block, and a nice play is made. But there's a flag down. Robertson saved the touchdown momentarily. Reed would have had it. And apparently Robertson's going to get flagged for it here for his effort. He might have had one arm around Reed. But it looked like a superb play. Pass interference. Usually when you see that line. Pass interference. Number 31 defense in the end zone. It'll be first and goal on the one yard line. He bats it away with the left hand. You usually don't see the right hand. Open to the inside. Oh, oh wow. wow. That's a great play. Now, the yeah. official threw it from behind. We yep. can't see where the right hand That's what you can't see. of Robertson is. The left hand, in my estimation, is perfect. That's a beautiful perfect. job of playing the football. Mm -hmm. Again, we can't see where the right hand was and whether or not 
he pushed the receiver. That was uh, that, that's a heartbreaker for Robinson and the Oilers. First and goal, and, <laughs> and that there, was, uh, there go Lynn the dominoes. Montgomery <laughs> coming across, and all fall down. There go the dominoes. Encroachment, number 94 defense, half the distance to the goal. And what's the, the first difference? Down. Yeah. When they move the ball about a half an inch, that's yeah. almost worth getting the chance to knock a couple guys on their keister. Yeah. <laughs> But it is though, Dan is, is sloppy, and Buddy's about to snap. Well, there's not much Buddy can do unless he's ready to put on some shoulder pads and go out here and try to tackle somebody himself. First and goal from the two-inch line, 21 to seven, Buffalo. And Kelly fumbles the football, and the Houston Oilers to try to stay in the game are going to have to come up with a recovery. I think Kelly covered it up himself and they don't get it. Yeah. Well, you got a Pro Bowl center and a Pro Bowl quarterback and the ball's on the ground. And a Pro Bowl defensive lineman right there on the left and Ray Childress. Jim Kelly just started to come out a little bit early. The ball was there. The ball was up by center Kent Hall. Jim was uh, backpedaling. Second and goal. Bill's looking for their first rushing touchdown of the season, and there's no play here. No play. White blowing the whistle. And the play clock was down to zero. I don't know if it's delay or just a lot here. Delay a game. It is. Offense, five yards, hmm. still second down. Wacky sequence here. A pass interference call on Houston makes it first and goal, and then a fumbled snap and a delay a game. Well, that's those, these normally plays the are quarterback sent in from the bench uh, when you get in short yardage or down around goal line. And you can see Kelly, who's had no problem in the middle field, calling his own plays, but he gets down close and he has to look to the bench. But it's the quarterback's responsibility to look at that play clock and adjust his snap count accordingly to try to get it off. Now we've got another whistle. And a timeout time called out. by Houston. Houston. That's their first charge timeout. They want to get the proper people on the field. It is second and goal when we come back. 3.39 to go in the half. Buffalo by 14. Houston just took a timeout. Buffalo will have it second and goal at the seven yard line, and the Bills are already on top by 14. So a critical defensive stand here for the Oilers to at least try to limit them to three. Already trailing by 14 are the Oilers, and Kelly leads them up on second down and goal at the seven. And Thurman Thomas, touchdown. Houston gambled, came with the blitz. We saw Lamar Lathan, number 57, blitz from the near side. It was a pass blitz. Buffalo ran the ball. And the Buffalo surge by the offensive line just blew the Oilers back into the end zone. Good plant from the outside foot by Thomas. Lowers ahead, then good power running. He does it all. Covers up the football. Lee Williams ends up making the tackle on Thurman Thomas, but that was two yards deep in the end zone, and that play started back near the eight-yard line. Here's Christie for the point after. And Buffalo this season has now scored ten touchdowns through the air, and that's their first on the ground. Well, it's grounding Houston into the ground, 28 to 7. Kind of a reversal. Now we get to see if Buffalo could hold their lead.
looking for a hook. I love that. Stay tuned. You never know who's coming back here, right? Darn right. I, this is comeback city here in, yeah. uh, in Buffalo. A lot of I think there's a tremendous amount of pressure on the Bills right now. Realizing that you know, Houston last year blew the big lead. Now they have a, just a tremendous amount of responsibility on their shoulders trying to hold this 28 to 7 lead. So early in the ball game. What do you think of that? Uh, I'll buy it. Right on top of it. I'm a Norman Vincent Peel <laughs> disciple. Yeah. There's a line drive kick by Christie, and that's taken by John Henry Mills. And he comes back out to the 29 yard line. Spirit of Akron looking down into a rich stadium. I mean, this has truly been the all time house of horrors. You think about the Bills last year. In the second half plus overtime in that game they scored 38 of their 41 points and they've got uh, 28 tonight so you've got 56 points in uh, what amounts to a full game in the last four quarters against Houston. Well there's Cornelius Bennett Bruce Smith on the other side. This is where they shine An offensive lineman's nightmare. Moon on first down. There's Lorenzo White reaching back, making the catch and gaining seven. He's tackled by Tally. Well, next week we go to Mile High Stadium in Denver, where the Broncos are always tough. Toughest team to beat at home perennially. John Elway, as always, guiding the Bronx, who came up short in their comeback attempt yesterday against Green Bay, against the Raiders, who pulled out a miracle. Victory in Los Angeles down 17 to nothing to the Jets and Vince Evans at the age of 38 guided him to a tremendous win. Raiders Broncos a great rivalry next Monday. It's safe to assume Al he'll start. I would have to think so. White is tackled back at the 36 yard line. Bruce Smith doing a very effective job of staying at home. He's got the outside containment on the play and he just he won't relinquish that position floats down the line and when Lorenzo tries to go outside makes the play. Meanwhile the Oilers are working against a pair of uh, substitute cornerbacks for Buffalo. Nate Odoms was hurt before he's out. J.D. Williams um, inactive tonight. David Poole takes the spot of Odoms and Thomas Smith a rookie is back there. As the Oilers have a third and four, slaughter in motion, Moon from the gun. And Warren going deep and too deep, intended for Jeffries, who was covered by the aforementioned David Poole. Poole coverage. Is this the White House? Yes, that's right. Here's Glenn Montgomery to kick. A rather anemic possession by the Oilers offense. Oof. That's you're being kind. Yeah. Not giving your defense much of an opportunity to regroup. Montgomery 56 yard boot and Russell Copeland brings it back to the 23. So Montgomery one of the few bright spots. Well a minute 50 left here in the second quarter. Now we'll find out if Buffalo goes for the jugular. Already up by three touchdowns.
traffic here, Kenny. Play yeah, nice okay. yeah. Ernest Gibbons and Haywood Jeffries. A couple of uh, the key receivers for Warren Moon, who just cannot find the consistency necessary to to get the Oilers out of this morass. One and three coming in and down by 21 with 150 to go in the half. Wilbur Marshall comes in to take his place in the defensive alignment and Buffalo has the ball at the 29 yard line. I think Marshall has one of those kinds of ankles Dan that he probably had that hurts like so bad then you go to sit down it for a while it's all right. Take the line coming to 23 that's Gardner for a gain of two to the 25. It's, it's one of those things Frank it, it, you you still practice on it but it seems like every day you just catch it that one time that that hurts it a little bit and they never seem to go away or to call it a nagging injury is is very precise that's what happens we've got a Buffalo player down on the he ground. just that's, toppled over all of a sudden that's Jim Richer their veteran left guard 13 years in the league and has just been an outstanding player for them for a long time. I didn't see it happen I think, at I think the conclusion. He, he might have a cramp. I mean, he just all of a sudden toppled over uh, in the huddle. Some kind of agony. He's he's definitely uncomfortable. Wear those knee braces, and oftentimes you get them a little tight, and, and hopefully that's what it is. Jim, uh, the player that. Now that he puts his helmet in that position, I think most of us over the years recognize him. He, it's impossible to lose that helmet. It's permanently attached to his shoulder pads. And he has been a stalwart on that offensive line for a long time. A multiple Pro Bowl player, number one draft choice. Talked about the problems with Houston and their offensive line. Of course, Buffalo lost Will Wolford to Indianapolis. Kent Hall had some early season troubles and now Jim Richer is being assisted to the sidelines. Now you take one look at that guy and you know he's not a rookie. Hmm. You know that guy didn't play his first game in this league last week. Last three possessions for the Buffalo Bills. Three touchdowns. Well there's a minute 31 left in the first half. They ran it on first down to Gardner for just a couple yards. Let's see if uh, Jim Kelly remains in a in a merciful mood. Second and eight of the 25. And Sean Jones is in the backfield. Get some real pushing and shoving going down here. Eddie Robinson one of the guys involved for the Oilers there. Yep. Talented outside linebacker. A lot yep. of frustration on that side of the ball yep. with Ken Hull. It's too to be the year they were going to get through those playoffs. They've been so frequently and into the Super Bowl. There is no play. We have offside defense number 96 in the offensive backfield, which causes the ball to be killed by rule. Still second down. That's the ruling where if they feel the player has come far enough across the line of scrimmage that he has a shot at at uh, hitting the quarterback. You see Richard being taken off the field. Another run. So Thomas and Thurman is uh, very close to that 100 yard figure in the first half. Uh, here goes Buffalo staying at the line. 94 yards already for Thurman Thomas. Clock is down to 113. First and ten at the 33. Buffalo up 28 to seven. And Kelly floats one to Thurman Thomas, and only his own man can stop him at the 33-yard line. <laughs> Carwell Gardner runs right into Thurman Thomas and knocks him down. And so much for <laughs> mercy on the part of Buffalo. Well, you knew once they got the first down, you know, Sean Jones jumping off sides really hurt the Oilers because they brought him into a third short six and they get the first down and they have no choice but to really try to stretch the field then. Carwell just <laughs> again, no little pressure on Kelly whatsoever, though. He just drifts back, drifts back, and finally couldn't find anyone else, so he just. <laughs> 
Buffalo takes a timeout. Buddy Ryan says, get me Gardner. You know, uh, in reality there, until an oiler touches Thurman Thomas, he could have gotten back up and taken off again. Being knocked down by your own teammate doesn't constitute down by contact, I don't believe. Mm -hmm. I think somebody on the defensive team has got to touch him. Yep. That is Gardner had some grand plans, though. <laughs> He had him an oiler. He was going to blindside. <laughs> <laughs> he just KO Thomas. There'll be some yucks in the film room this week. Well, they're laughing about it now. Yeah, well, there ought to be a thank you card for Buddy Ryan. Yes, yeah, I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Gardner. Well, you know, Carwell Gardner was a defensive end in college, so he's used to knocking people down. First down at the 32-yard line. After the Buffalo timeout, here come the Oilers on a blitz and on a mistimed handoff. It is Eddie Robinson who takes care of Thurman Thomas back at the 37. Well, that's that just Buddy Ryan's call. fire drill blitz also. Everybody coming. Loss of five. And the Bills, uh, no particular hurry here. The clock is down to 27 seconds. Here comes an audible by Kelly. He sees four across the board for Houston. And then he throws and re-drops the ball. So the line of scrimmage remains the 37. You're in Steve Christie field goal range right now. It was Christie who kicked the 59-yarder a couple of weeks back. And they still have one timeout remaining, so... They can run a play anywhere on the field and, and get the clock stopped in time to run their field goal team out onto the field. Third and 15 at the 37 yard line. Thomas. 36 yard line and they'll take a timeout here. Will the Bills and bring in Christie for three. Buffalo. Well it has not been a, a good first half for Warren Moon but for the uh, many people who have gotten to know Warren through the years, he is an extraordinary man. And we will feature him in our halftime interview tonight. It's kind of an odd true. series. He spends so much time, his off time, during the off season and during the season, doing so many things for, for so many others. All in so many charitable ventures down in Houston. And not just in a cursory sense. I mean, I'm not downplaying athletes who spend a lot of time uh, doing things for charity, but you know the way it goes. There are guys who can they'll play in the golf tournament and the tennis tournament and the rest, and, and that's fine. But it, Warren immerses himself and has for years in in helping people. Well, you guys from Hamilton Higher like that. Absolutely. Good upbringing. Please. <laughs> <laughs> Moon attending uh, yeah. high school in Los Angeles. The Yankees. Here's Steve Christie. This is a 54-yard field goal attempt. And that one is well off to the left. With two ticks remaining. So Mark Levy, his team leading by 21 and trying to go 4-1. And, one. and uh, as you all know, with Marino out, the Miami Dolphins are now a, a different team, obviously. And you've got uh, Indy struggling. You've got the Jets all of a sudden struggling after a, a promising start. And New England will not be in the race. You know that in the in the long run. So the Buffalo Bills are right now in uh, in pretty prime position once again in the AFC East. I think Marv Levy, you saw him express a little displeasure there. That that was not a very well executed possession by the Bills, except for that one pass to Thurman Thomas. And I think he'll let him know it at halftime. This game's far from over. And the half will end on a Lorenzo White pickup at the 42. So the half is over. The Bills lead it by a score of 28 to 7. And we'll be back with halftime activities on Monday Night Football after this message from the NFL and a word from our ABC station. The Oilers, 28 to 7. Bills leading by 21 as Willie Drury accepts it at the seven-yard line, and a flag goes down and another flag as well at the 28-yard line. Mark Pike makes the hit. 
So Tom White and his crew begin uh, the second half with a holding call against the Oilers. Marv Levy, well, he's uh, in good shape. He's 65 years old. He still loves to coach. And Ralph Wilson, his owner, loves him. Holding number 32 during the return, 10 yards, still first down. Which one of those two is a candidate for an ulcer? Mm. Spencer we, Tillman with a penalty. We talked about Steve Tasker in the first half, the Pro Bowl special teams player. That's the kind of attention you get. That's, that's a hold by Tillman, but it's an also pretty good acting job by Tasker, too, of going over backwards. The so Moon and the Oilers backed up to the 12. Warren under pressure, but he gets it away to Lorenzo White. He takes it up to the 19. Tally and Bennett converge on the hit. It'll be second and four. Cornelius Bennett, you know, you think about the Bills and the marquee guys, and a lot of it has to do with the fact they played in three Super Bowls, but you've got Bennett and Smith and Kelly and Thomas and Reed, and they have as many marquee names as any team in the league. There's Bruce. I mean, they really ideally suited to play against the run and shoot defensively. Cornelius Bennett on one side, Bruce Smith on the other. Bennett from the down position or the up position. Second and four, and Moon incomplete. Givens the nearest receiver. Third down. Let's take a look at the numbers through the first 30 minutes of competition. 28 to 7. The Bills on top. Quite an offensive showing by Buffalo. 275 yards, but three turnovers, 14 points directly attributable to those uh, three turnovers for the Buffalo Bills and. No secret, they're leading 28 to 7. Third and four from the 19 yard line. Flag. This may be a free first down here. Has they, that look. Yep, they got it anyway, but Jeffrey's 27 yard line. And the Bills was, were across the ball, Al and Frank. The question is uh, now, I guess, were they induced? I believe he'll say encroachment number 53, if I had to guess. Offsides, number 53 defense. Penalty is declined. First down. I am proud to study at the feet of the master. Barb, <laughs> because Pat, he's in there with Darius Tally. Mentioned that they, Bills were going with two down linemen, Bruce Smith and Jeff Wright. Cornelius Bennett, the other down lineman at times. Pat and Tally, and six safety uh, defensive backs in there. 27 yard line. Moon throws a strike over the middle, and the catch is made by Gary Wellman, second year receiver out of USC. Makes his first catch of the game, 22 yards. I think it was his first catch of the season as well. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, sir. I think Marv at halftime is, and it could have been so trite as to remind his team of what happened here a year ago. What if it came up? Or would you even have to? About their overcoming the 32 point deficit you know it did all coaches think alike first and 10 at the 49 yard line fake draw but still the heat is on oh, oh, loses oh. the football and the bills get it marcus Patton. how could it go any worse for warren oh, yeah. bennett forced moon to step up Smith was there. Patton was always around the football. That's where a guy's got to walk off the field saying, how can this happen? I elude one of the great pass rushers in the game in Bennett, and then I get away from Bruce Smith, and my reward for doing that is turning the ball over. Top of your screen, 97. Bennett forces Moon to step up. Bruce Smith had an arm on him. I don't know whether he jarred him or not. I think he just lost the football on his own. Well, it, it came loose as Bruce Smith went by. If he was not directly involved in forcing the ball to come loose, then at least indirectly. Here's Thomas. Well, when a team's going like Houston, you can look at a lot of things, but I'll tell you one thing. They have now played a little more than 18 quarters of football this season, and they have turned the ball over 18 times. And when you turn it over once a quarter, 
Well, you're lucky to be one and four. Well, they came in. Yeah, look at this. Here's a reverse, a deep reverse. This is Billy Brooks, who took it from Thomas, and he gets inside the 40 and banged down by Al Smith at the 39, a little short of the first. And look at the former Indianapolis Colt, who, like the rest of these Bill receivers, BB and Reed is very effective in running the football. Well, Brooks came in here, not only took the place of James Lofton, he took his number as well. The number 80 that uh, three times the leading receiver yeah. for the Colts in their tough years. And really was a number worn proudly here by James Lofton. Third and a long one. Until he throws it underneath and Gardner simply drops the football. It could be why he only has those three receptions on the year. He's been Houston's best asset lately. Tried to catch one for him there. Made a tackle a little earlier. There, here, here you are. Oh, come on. <laughs> Eddie ball. Robinson very close to it. Almost got it. The ball just a few inches uh, behind where Gardner would have liked it, but still very catchable. <laughs> Chris Moore to boot it. And can Tasker save it? Uh, ooh. They had to get uh, control of it and couldn't. But, I mean, that's one reason Marv Levy said last night, not only is Tasker the best special teams player in the game today. He is the best special teams player of all time, in the words of Marv Levy. And he's seen a few. If they just wouldn't have... Scene. Al talked about Steve Tasker. Here he is right here. If nobody from Buffalo even touches this ball, it's going to be dead. Instead, they kick it right here into the end zone. Richard Harvey, and watch Tasker's reaction. Oh, no. <laughs> How could you do that? If they wouldn't have touched it, the ball would be dead at the half-yard line. A nice break for Houston. And we'll see if they can exploit it as Lorenzo White picks up three, takes it up to the 23-yard line. Bennett with the tackle. 11-28 to go. Third quarter, 28-7, Buffalo. Well, this is the type of a half where the Houston team is going to be measured in a lot of different ways. Their emotion, their effort, their productivity. This is a team that much was expected from and very little has been delivered. On second and seven. And Moon throws and incomplete as Webster Slaughter was the intended receiver. Running down the sideline. Third and seven. 
Cornelius Bennett we talked about earlier having a superb year they wanted to move him inside and Shane Conlon went out to the Rams Carlton Bailey went to the Giants as unprotected free agents and they just neglected to tell him and when he said sit down with Marv Re uh, Levy said I don't really want to be inside well, that, they settled that very amicably and he moved back to the outside and that didn't sit well with a lot of fans but Marv Levy said we made a mistake we should have told him and asked him first third and seven heavy four-man rush Moon steps up has to get to the 30 has the first oh, down wow. and Warren Moon turns it into a big gainer all the way to the 42 yard line of the Buffalo Bills well I'd look the record book up for a Warren Moon well, what do they say scrimmage. about necessity being the mother of invention? Bruce Smith got a shot at a rookie. The number one draft choice of Houston, Brad Hopkins, was in there at left tackle. And Bruce Smith went around him like he was not even in the vicinity. Watch Smith go upfield, uncontested, and Warren Moon lucky to get away. Doug Dawson comes back and picks off Smith. And Warren Moon, this is literally running for your life. That is the longest run of his career, and that includes Canada. And they try an inside play with an end coming around. Gary Wellman, gained a three. Warren's longest career rush was 31 yards in the NFL in his rookie season with the Oilers, 84. And before that, he played at Edmonton. And his longest rush up there was 33 yards. He made a nice little move on it to the outside. He's ready to hook slide, and all of a sudden, he got a block in front of him, broke it to the outside. Look at this guy. What a player. But I'm not looking at him from across the line of scrimmage. What a player. Looks like Norgard gets the lucky duty now. Second and eight. Play clock is down to two. They just get it off. He pump fakes and throws. It's batted again. It's volleyball once again into the arms of Pally. Three interceptions, five turnovers. Marcus Patton created it. They look like uh, Sinjin Smith and Randy Stoklos tonight. The two the linebackers beach. that are playing defense for the Bills tonight teaming up. Patton deflects it. <laughs> Tally comes up with it. Twice we've seen that tonight. But all night long, Moon has had people in his face. Beach volleyball in Buffalo. Patkin, Patton, Marcus Patton. Knocks it into the air. Here comes Tally. Two very active linebackers. And Buffalo has it at the 48-yard line. Thurman Thomas gets buried by Ray Childress, who's had about enough of this. The all-pro defensive tackle in his ninth year out of Texas A&M. And a season like this has to be real depressing for a guy like this who's played so brilliantly through the years on a team that just keeps coming up short. And he is one of the truly fine all around defensive linemen in the game. Maybe not as spectacular in his pure athleticism like like Bruce Smith with that upfield burst but a real grinder a real plugger in his own right. A year in year out all pro player. Second and 16. Thurman Thomas. Thomas is up and over 100 yards again behind a Pete Metzler's block. He takes it to the 50. And what else is new? Thurman Thomas in triple figures. You know, once having carried that football, I, I, I just I love to watch him do what he does. Metzler's with a good block, number 88. Look at this. A little skip to the inside. A defensive back coming up. Thought he had him buried. He didn't even touch him. He reads the entire field when he's running. He's making moves. Other people can't do. Free play, third and seven, and the catch made by Brooks, and that should be enough for a first down. You want to know when things are going bad? When a safety jumps off sides and hurts himself in the process. Bubba McDowell came across the line of scrimmage, threw his leg out to try to stop himself, and comes up limping. Oh. How bad are things going in Houston? Let me count the ways. Offside, number 28 defense. That penalty has declined. 
take the result of the play. First down. First down at the 40-yard line. By the way, I put Thomas over the 100 mark, but he had those two losses of six and five. He actually right now with a net of 92, but uh, it won't be long. You heard <laughs> before too long. You heard Tom White incorrectly call Chris Dishman. It was Bubba McDowell, number 25, who jumped off side. Thomas picks up uh, yard number 93 on his 22nd carry of the evening, stopped by William Fuller. Rich Stadium in Buffalo, where the, uh, the Bills will be back on the night of November 1st, and we will be here as well, a Monday night game here in three weeks as the Bills take on the Washington Redskins. That's close to being a lateral. Brooks. Buffalo takes on the Jets after the bye week. They're off next weekend, then they go to the Jets, and then they come back here with Washington on a Monday. And if they win tonight, find themselves at 4-1, and one, tied with Miami, but... There's an asterisk with that tie with the loss of Dan Marino in Miami. Scott Mitchell's the quarterback, and we really don't care who's taking his place. Dan Marino's not to be replaced. Third and six, and Thurman Thomas on an inside handoff that's read nicely by the Oiler defense and is busted up by Sean Jones. Fourth down, seven to go, 30. Bills looking over at the bench. They want Christie or Moore. And they opt to punt, or at least line up to punt. Certainly within Chris Moore, within Christie's range, rather. Mm -hmm. But with a 28 to 7 lead, not a bad strategy. Yep, instead of going for a 55 yard field goal, they send the uh, Moore punt down in the direction of Willie Drury. And he gets gang tackled as he crosses the 20 yard line. Oiler ball, 6.15 remaining in the third. Buffalo by three TDs. Been there. Like I'm gonna have uh, time to do this. Riviera. Holy man. Okay. That's the Wednesday lineup. Home improvement with the great Tim Allen and also Brett Butler starring in Grace Under Fire. Our Wednesday lineup. Roch Ear on ABC. Grace Under Fire is certainly a pretty apt description of what Warren Moon is trying to show. From the 22-yard line, Warren Moon, who's came down by 21, forced out, throws, incomplete, running for his life, second and 10. Warren Moon, almost in the end zone, shot from guns after he released that pass, took a real serious hit. The Buffalo defensive line is just pouring through. This is an Oiler offensive line that's banged up. There's a hit by Biscuit Bennett. Right now, Warren Moon must be feeling every bit. What is he, 36? 37 in November. 
He'll be 37. Right. And I'll guarantee you, he feels 57 right now. Here they come again. Here's Lorenzo White, screen over the middle, and Lorenzo is able to uh, get a first down before Darrell Talley and Mark Kelso come in to stop him. Good call, the middle screen. Everybody is thinking sack. They come with the blitz, and it sets up beautifully. One of the problems with Lorenzo White, he's a good receiver out of the backfield, but in this offense and what's happening down there now, you almost have to keep him in there as a blocker. You like to get the ball to him half a dozen or more times as a receiver, but you really got to keep him in there to protect the quarterback. 34 yard line. And stripped of the ball is Webster Slaughter. It is picked up by Poole, and the Oilers have turned the ball over six times. Poole not realizing that uh, that he could pick it up and go. Henry Jones came around behind him and just ripped it out of there. Well, Henry Jones first of all has developed into one of the premier defensive backs in the National Football League and it's only only his third year out of Illinois here's a guy that really has justified being the number one draft There's choice you talk to the guys around the league and they just say the Jones kid in Buffalo has really evolved into a great one <laughs> good look at it there in less than three complete years at three interceptions return for touchdowns first and ten at the 31 yard line and Thurman Thomas gets stopped in his tracks. Wilbur Marshall came in to break the play up and Ray Childress in on the hit with five minutes to go in the third quarter. 28 to 7, Buffalo. Second and 10. Kelly hit from behind after the pump fake, he and the fumbled. ball is on the ground. Tom White takes a peek. And it is third down, meaning that uh, Kelly came up with the football himself. Sean Jones is coming around on the outside. Kelly actually had time to get rid of the football, but good coverage downfield. He pulled it down to avoid the possibility of an interception. The Bills are close to incurring the wrath of Marv Levy. Uh, it's almost as if they're waiting for Houston to roll over and die. Buffalo has not done anything all that special for quite a while in this ball game. Third and 13 at the 34. And the catch is made at the 16-yard line, but the ball is lost to Robertson. BB had it, lost the football. Robertson comes up with it. And the Bills are going to contend the play should be dead. Down by contact, but it has the look of a Houston recovery. I don't know whether BB had made contact. He knew he was going to hit. He went down to the carpet on his own. So Tom White discussing it with his field judge, and the field judge discussing it with one of the other officials. Now, the Jim, now Jim Kelly gets in a shoving match. How was it say Jim Kelly was a masquerading a linebacker as a quarterback. Well, I saw no signal where anybody ruled it down, so I'm not sure that it's a question of even having contrasting calls to decide which one to take. Phoebe, now he catches the football. He knows he's going to be hit. He just goes diving down to the carpet on his own. Now watch this. Down he goes. Hmm. And I guess you could get argument and say he could have got up and run after that. Hit by McDowell. To have possession of a pass, you must come down with both feet on the ground and demonstrate possession. It was either an incomplete pass, of which we saw no ruling. Does he come ruling down with both field. feet? It's a completed pass. He had caught the oh, ball, yeah. taking two steps, then fumbled the ball. First down. That is exactly the correct call. That's precisely what happened. Good officiating. Without replay. Well, that's really a good call. Yep. Timeout.
foot Quaker Ridge and Van Ham. And what do they got? A 23 swing, a 23 turnover swing between these two clubs. Very unique concept coming your way. The Chrysler American Grade 18 on Sunday. You've got John Daly, Tom Kite, Fuzzy Zeller, and Davis Love. And they play 18 separate holes, 18 of the greatest holes on different courses around the country. And that comes your way on Sunday. Uh, the 10th hole of Wingfoot, I understand. Yep, that's one of them. And Quaker Ridge is in there, Westchester Country Club. Those golf courses all within about a mile of each other. Yep. Good show. Cody Carlson comes in. So Warren Moon gets lifted. After three picks and three other fumbles by the Oilers and Carlson from the 26 yard line, escapes Bennett, throws underneath to Lorenzo White for a short game. Best and worst turnover ratios uh, as the league concludes the sixth week. And I think they're here together tonight. Yep. How's yes. that? A 23 turnover differential between the Bills and the Oilers. Cody has his skates on because Warren was very active. He chased from the moment this game was kicked off. Moon was 16 to 25, but for only 177, one touch and three interceptions. Carlson guns it. Jeffries makes the catch, tackled by Poole. Forward progress enough for a first down at the 39 yard line with 3.20 to go in the third. You know, we're talking about Houston and a, a possible coaching change, if not during the season, after the season. Another thing that Bud Adams talked about today was the fact that he wants to see more variation in the offense. And there are a lot of people who think that the run and shoot, as it is constituted right now, has about run its course. At the 39-yard line. Carlson, <laughs> somehow it winds up in the hands of Eric Norgard. It's just batted. It's just batted by one of the Bills right to him. A lineman's dream. And the Buffalo gets to run against the Buffaloes. We've seen more deflected balls tonight. The Patton deflects it. Yep. Norgard from the University of Colorado. Look at him go, too. That's a moves. Pretty doggone good acceleration. Covers it up. Hey, it takes Bennett and Tally both to bring him down. Norgard in there because Mike Munchak started the game and had to leave because of his bad knees. From the 48, here's Lorenzo White. He picks up three flag down. Tackle made by Oliver Barnett. 2-11 to go in the third, 28-7. to Bills on top. There's been no scoring thus far in the second half almost certainly a holding call illegal use of the hands to the face number 78 defense five yards Whoa. Bruce Smith working against Derek Norgard Bruce as he is prone to do slides all around on the defensive line I think that time was working inside yeah working against number 64 yeah, he's got the left hand up on the face mask. And the umpire saw it and threw the flag. Got to keep those hands away from another player's face mask. At the 40, three receivers set to the right. Carlson looked left and goes over the middle. And he hits Gary Roman. And he's out of bounds at the 28-yard line. Houston can get this ball into the end zone. As sloppy as Buffalo is playing, could get very interesting. Yeah. Well, come, come, comebacks have been the uh, the order of the day week after week this year. The uh, unfortunately for the Jets, they've been on the reverse side of two 17-point squandered leads. The Eagles uh, came from behind. Three straight weeks to erase deficits of 10 or more. First down of the 28. Well, Jeffries. Carlson throws. That's incomplete. Intended for Jeffries. By the way, the Jets became the first team in the history of the league to squander back-to-back 17-point -back leads. And uh, meanwhile, all week long, I've been reading and hearing about 
Three consecutive wins after trailing by at least 10. And people writing and saying that it was the first time ever when the Eagles did it. First time ever. It's the fifth time since 1980. What are we talking about? The Bills did it last in 1990. It's funny. Somebody says something or writes something, and it's all picked up around the country. And the next thing you know, it becomes the gospel untruth. And by God, you'll set them straight. You once better you. believe it. <laughs> Second and ten. Cross. <laughs> it's tackled back at the 34-yard line by Bruce Smith. He did dispense that information with a little fervor, didn't he? Oh, man. <laughs> I mean, how many times are you going to hear the incorrect information before somebody comes in and says, wrong? Well, until well, Monday. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Until Monday. You got it. I was going to say, Al, you're only one man. <laughs> America's ombudsman. Wow. We just... <laughs> you know, we just missed those Thursday night specials and those Sunday night specials, or we could, they wouldn't have to wait a week to hear it. Right. Third and 16 at the 34. White inside the 25 takes it to the 20 yard line. Well, that's good running after the reception and a good call. A little screen with a little roll on the part of Cody Carlson. And then just fine running by Lorenzo White. It will bring up a fourth down situation, and obviously Houston in a position where they have to go for it. Keep in mind the Bills going without their two regular cornerbacks. Odom's going out tonight. Diddy Williams out. And that's right where the Houston offensive line wants to see Bruce Smith over on the bench. I think we're having an oxygen deficiency. Fourth and two. He's been doing wind sprints all night for the quarterback. Oilers trying to stay in the game with a conversion here, and it's batted again and incomplete, and that time it's Cornelius Bennett knocking it down and giving Buffalo the ball back. Bennett has been everywhere tonight. This guy's been batting balls, chasing quarterbacks, chasing running backs, knocking the ball out. Stellar performance by Buffalo as a whole, but Bennett in particular is shining bright. Ten seconds remaining in the third quarter. The Buffalo Bills, Orchard Park, New York, Rich Stadium. Happy fans tonight because their team leads by 21. Nice sight from uh, the Goodyear Blimp. Amazing Stir what people back. will do when they see a little red light go on. Yeah. <laughs> We're no different. <laughs> well, uh, the zeros are a little better. Here's a Kenneth Davis who gives Davis. Thurman Thomas a little bit of a breather here. And that's the end of the third quarter. Still 28 to 7. Bills on top and back we come with the fourth quarter of Monday night football after this from our ABC station. Thank you. 
When in Buffalo, do as the Buffalonians do. Buffalo wings. You'll hear from the chicken lovers. Right well, this is really the home and uh, the birthplace of uh, chicken wings. That'll stop your arteries just looking at it, won't you? Won't it? Look at that. Interesting, isn't it, that uh, tonight's game blacked out of the local area, a few thousand seats not sold. And that game a year ago, the playoff game, Buffalo came back from that 32-point deficit. That, too, was blacked out. And you, All the people that tell you they were there here in Buffalo, you would have thought there was 500,000 here. Well, it's, a, it's an awful large stadium in a, in a very small market, and the people who support the Bills come from hundreds of miles from around here in a night game in particular it's hard for them to make the trip and a January game yeah. you might want to think twice before you showed up for a January game Kenneth Davis not behind the line of scrimmage still on the other side of the coin this team led the league in attendance last year partially because of the, uh, the large capacity here that's six really stands out but in reality only 14 Buffalo points as a result of those six turnovers and that's if there's any good to come out of it that's not bad. The six turnovers are horrible. The 14 points as a result of it are not all that bad. This could be more of a route than it is. Third and 10, and the catch is made by Russell Copeland. Copeland is the rookie from Memphis State who's been utilized by Marv Levy as a kick returner. And that's uh, the third catch of his very brief career. Fourth round draft pick. They like very much here in Buffalo. Marv Levy used to coach Kansas City. Yeah. He's been around, been around a long time. Used up in the Canadian League, was head coach up there for a while. Yeah. Used to coach at Country Day High School in St. Louis. Yes, sir. That's where he began his career. Oldest coach, uh, head coach, and Paul Brown retired in the mid 1970s. And uh, Kenneth Davis picks up two. You know, if his health holds out, then uh, Marv is the kind of guy that enjoys very much what he does. He really, he loves the cerebral aspect of coaching. He is a Phi Beta Kappa, Cole College, got a master's at Harvard. Fascinating man. And what a record he's had here. Yep. Like 30 Marv and six for the last five years here at home. Marv and our producer, Kenny Wolf, the two most prominent Harvard alums in the history of that fine school. Kenny Gross and a superb athlete there, basketball player. Second and eight. Copeland makes the catch, and he is tackled up at the 43-yard line. Steve Jackson is there. The old Crimson. Well, 40 remaining. Fourth quarter. Al Michaels, Frank Gifford, and Dan Deardorff in Buffalo next week. Denver, Mile High Stadium. Rocking as always, Broncos home against the Los Angeles Raiders. And I want to know what kind of vitamins Vince Evans is taking because I want them immediately. Yeah, hard to hold a uh, good old USC Trojan down very long. He keeps hopping up with another franchise. He's been all over several leagues. And he was splendid yesterday. Who will start uh, Monday night for the Raiders? Good question, I think. You want to call Trumpy? <laughs> What's the Cincinnati area code? I'm <laughs> it's an interesting question. Yeah. yeah. You got Jeff Hostetler to be your quarterback, to be the guy that's going to take you someplace, and yet Vince Evans is, is extremely productive. Here's Davis to Reed, and he gets taken down by Keith McCants. Al sparing no one tonight. No, 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 no. Trump's, of a good, Trump's a good friend. Now, come on. Oh, <laughs> well, you're right. It's, it's an interesting question. You know, Bob raised the no, point during that game sure. about 
That's and, and I agreed with it. When I he made too. the point, I agreed with it. Yep. Art Shell, what, what do you do when you go to Vince Evans with that much time left in the second quarter? And what does this do to Jeff Hostetler for the balance yeah. of the season? Oh, and I'm interested who's going to start no, next Monday night. A very legitimate yeah. question. If you don't know, if you didn't see the game yesterday when uh, Evans came in, Bob Trumpy uh, really came down on Art Shell for the decision. But at that point, uh, as Kelly calls timeout, you had to agree. And then all of a sudden, you know, he finds the fountain of youth as Evans. There is no the Raiders had a miracle game. win. Number 12 has so a timeout. So Bob, Bill, you owe us one. Guys, oh boy. Might as well roll it in. I got the, we got, got, the, uh, got the press guys looking in over here. You're going to love that. The pigs. Go to the trough, pigs. <laughs> Who's got the ball? I don't even know. <laughs> okay. Really. These guys. The blues. Okay. <laughs> Some notes from yesterday. Roosevelt Potts, who was uh, picked in the second round by Indy, a uh, Louisiana kid. First rookie since Icky Woods to rush for 100 yards against the defending Super Bowl champs. He did it for Indy against Dallas. Richard Dent had his eighth career pick. And uh, Ron McDowell, a good friend of Dan's, is the all-time owner of that record. And as we mentioned before, the Jets losing uh, by 17 consecutive, uh, losing by 17 points for the second consecutive game. Ron McDowell, the leader there with a dozen. And by his own admittance, the reason he has that record is because he was a very poor pass rusher. And you don't intercept the ball when you're only a foot from the quarterback. It helps to be about four or five yards away. He had a great knack for it. Here's Kelly throwing. The catch is made by Copeland, and the flag goes down as he takes it up to the 47-yard line. I don't think that's the same reason for Richard Dent, though. One of the no great pass rushers. No, with with Dent, it's it's a wonderful instinctive knack of knowing when the quarterback is going to throw the ball. I, you saw the one that he intercepted yesterday. That thing was a rifle shot and stuck. He just, it just stuck. He caught it. Steve McMichael intercepted one for the Bears Holding yesterday as well. Number 88 on the offense. Penalty is declined. We'll take the result of the play. Fourth down. I don't, uh, Bubby Brister is setting a record yesterday uh, of Four some back. sort, I would imagine. Uh, two interceptions to two defensive Three linemen four. in one game. Not to... Uh, Whoa, <laughs> the ball. Play blown dead before the snap. They're actually doing the wave here at Rich Stadium. There is no play. We were not ready to put the ball in play. This is our fault. We'll redo it. Our fault? Jerry Seaman is here tonight, the head of the official, along with Commissioner Paul Tagliabue. We're all on our best behavior. Well, you don't see the wave all that much anymore. It's kind of a fad that in a lot of places has run its course and yet being resurrected here tonight by the faithful at Rich State. Moore's kick gathered at the 14 with a jewelry. A little chilly here too, Dan. That might have something to do with it. At least when you're doing the wave, you just have to move around a little bit, get the love blood circulating. Beautiful fall evening here in Buffalo. Nice try.
He's a former Oiler coach and father of the current Denver coach, Bum Phillips, and now a radio broadcaster. Watched him suffer through the first half of last night's game. Being broadcast here in Buffalo, he's here uh, for the radio show, and of course he felt much better about the comeback that Denver made a spectacular one coming up just a little short. Doing radio for the Houston Oilers, I bet that's a festive broadcast. Ooh. Carlson throws. And the catch is made by Levinger Slaughter. Yeah. We're talking about comebacks. Mentioned before the Jets, the second team in NFL history to lose consecutive games in which they led by 17. Green Bay, the other, they did it in 1983. Oilers here trail by 21 with 10 13 remaining in the fourth quarter. And Smith. And Brad Hopkins, the number one draft choice, the rookie, 72 out of Illinois. Well, that's that's just a rookie realizing that he's got a real load across the line from him, and just sometimes you tell your mind not to do it, but you go anyway. And he just he rocked out of there early. The hot breath of the great one. Whoa. False start. Number 72 on the offense. That's a five-yard penalty. The defense was in the neutral zone. First time this happened, it's a warning. Hereafter, if this happens, it'll be a penalty on the defense. Bruce mm -hmm. has been lining up very tight all night long. He looked like he's been over several times, but now he has been warned. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's actually a correct statement of the rules by Tom White, but actually it, it was a case where Hopkins rolling back actually got Bruce Smith the move. He governed accordingly. That's tipped and incomplete. Webster Slaughter got a hand on it, and so did the Buffalo Bill, Matt Darby. Bruce Smith hasn't had all that many sacks thus far this year, but he's had a million pressures, it seems. Really, he is well again. He kind of blimped through what, all of 91, and then last year it started to get well, and this is the Bruce Smith that we were used to seeing in those first few years. Dominating football player, like few others. And we saw what that kind of talent could do last night. You saw Reggie White closed out the Green Bay Denver game with two consecutive sacks on John Elway and that kind of force on the defensive line money can't buy. Well it, it can't buy it. It, <laughs> it did buy it in Green Bay. I've talked a lot about it. You can buy it from a player standpoint. You may wish yourself into trying to do those things but only a few can. I guess I misspoke there a little bit. <laughs> Slaughter making that last catch up at the 44 yard line. It'll be third down and nine with 927 remaining in the fourth quarter. And the Bills on top 28 to seven in what has been a scoreless second half. And Slaughter makes the catch. To the Buffalo 48, and that's not going to be enough for a first down. But when you're down by 21 and it's fourth and one, you are going for it. Jack Pardee. God, how long ago does it seem that he, he coached the Chicago Bears? People forget about that. The Washington Redskins played in the Super Bowl for the Redskins in 1972 against Miami, and part of that over the hill gang that came to George Allen from the Los Angeles Rams to Washington. Fourth and one at the 48. White checking the call. Play clock is down to four. To the air they go on fourth and one. And he nearly had it picked off, but that's as good as an interception because it's going to turn the ball over. In fact, it's better. Saves him a couple of yards. Darrell Talley knocks it down. Bills have the ball.
Jetson, too. Let that part out. <laughs> Lift off. 48 yard line. The Buffalo Bills have it. They lead by 21. It's 28 to 7. And now uh, the hurry up offense will become a little less hurried up as the Bills will take some time off the clock. Kenneth right. Davis to the 48. Davis the ball oh, that, was, that was pretty, wasn't it? Well, Jim Kelly. Jim Kelly falls down yeah, making a handoff. Yes. Well, even though they this often don't go without the huddle, it, in the hurry up offense, you can just take as much time as you want to do. Now they're yes. going to go back to work out of the huddle. And the Oilers will head back. They'll arrive in Houston at about 5 o'clock in the morning. Then they come back to Foxborough next week. They have Cincinnati at home, and it begins again with the grumbling and the griping and the call-in shows and all of the rest of it. What's going on with the Oilers? They want to know. We saw Bum Phillips before, and as Davis takes it through the middle. There are some people who want to bring Buff Phillips in as the coach. Buddy Ryan, of course, uh, a logical candidate in the minds of many, a former coach. Floyd Reese, who's the assistant to the general manager, is another being talked about. You it's know, tough funny to bring Buddy in, Al, because yeah. the personnel the Oilers have. I mean, yep. I mean, first of all, he's ridiculed the offense that they use, even though he's quieted down the past couple of weeks. But if he were to become the head coach, what would he do? He's got a run and shoot. He's got run and shoot personnel. He's got one semi tied in. It well, just it wouldn't. We just couldn't play Buddy Ryan football. We're reporting what they are reporting, or what has been reported in Houston as contact is made. And it's, it's a funny thing that's happening, of course, with the cottage industry of inside information and all of that. It's gotten to the point, as Tom White tells us about Approach the call. Rate, number 79 defense, five yards. That'll be a first down. Where week after week you have people saying, well, if he doesn't win this game, look for the rumors to start about him getting fired. I mean, you talk about taking yourself off the hook. Where do the rumors come from? The same guys that tell you the rumors are going to start. Yeah. It's an amazing thing. Interesting, too. So many of the Oiler players and coaches have their own radio shows, television shows. You have to say something. And no matter what they say, it can be misinterpreted. I bet they're all thrilled about having to go to work yeah. this week on those shows. Mm -hmm. I wish they had a bio on that, huh? <laughs> Gain a nine. I mean, how many times has Landville been fired by the insiders this year? But to my knowledge, Jerry is still the coach in Atlanta. Is that correct? We haven't checked tonight. Last time, well, yeah. Before our arrival at the ballpark, he was still the coach. And Jack Pardee is still the coach of the Oilers. Mm -hmm. And we do not want to appear frivolous in discussing his future. Mm -hmm. But it is a fact that there were large expectations for this football team and they are light years away from fulfilling it. And Kenneth Davis takes it to the 16-yard line. A 16-yard game. We haven't really even touched on the fact that so many of these Oilers are going to be free agents after this season. Uh, somewhere in the, what, like 23 of them are going to be free agents uh, mm -hmm. after this year. Bud Adams, the owner of the team, Gave a speech at the beginning of training camp, uh, implying that this was a this was the season, and if we didn't do it this year, it uh, it's just going to be a vastly different team in the future. So this this team from day one has had a dark cloud hanging over it, and I, from a player's perspective, it's no wonder that they're playing like this. Mm -hmm. They can say all they want about we don't read the papers, we don't listen to the shows, and we're we're really focused when we're on the practice field. But it, you'd have to go some to find a team in recent memory that has to operate under some of the adversity that the Oilers are operating under right here at this mm -hmm. point in time in the 93 season. Well, Dan, so much of it for the first few weeks, they were the talk shows. They were the newspapers. Even though it's quieted down considerably over the past couple of weeks, uh, they were the ones that fueled it. Second. Coaches and players. Yeah. Second and 14 at the 19. Clock down to 508. For a transcript of that previous commentary, we'll <laughs> send a dollar in a self-addressed stamped envelope to Lovely Al Michaels out in right. Colorado. <laughs> well, next week we'll be in Denver. It's the Raiders against the Broncos. Always a great matchup, and that, that's provided some tremendous Monday night action through the years. A few years back, Raiders erased the 24-0 deficit and won the game. 
Now just to follow up a little bit on uh, what Dan was talking about. Dan, what were you talking about? <laughs> What are you talking about? I was talking about the <laughs> adversity that we're having to operate under up here in the booth. <laughs> the adversity on the field has spilled up here to the booth. And now we are operating with distractions. <laughs> Third and 13. And Kelly Banks is in here. Got to get the flag on that There one. it is. There it is. Intended for Reed. Well, if he doesn't grab Reed, that's almost a, a cinch six-pointer. Yeah, that's right. Well, this game's not over Passing yet, but it's about to be. Number 28 on well, the defense. That'll be a first and goal. It's it's not over for a lot of fans and a lot of fans around the country just yet. Well, if you know what in. I mean, and I know you do. I understand. <laughs> Fishman had no other choice, or it felt he did, had no other choice. Like baseball, there's a magic number. The magic number tonight is 41. Here's Davis taking it to the five. Second and goal. That completes your list, I believe. <laughs> we cover the earth. <laughs> Spanning the globe. Spanning the globe. Uh oh, there goes a the flag. Somebody said something. Somebody said something that was not appreciated by the men in the black and white. Play a game on a defense. Too many men. If we have to distance, the first down. Mm -hmm. How did that flag just come out now? I know what they said. 12? <laughs> it took them a while to count that. And now here come another, an armada of Oilers on and off. First and goal at the three. Davis. He's in there, but the flag is down in the corner of the end zone. And one at the line of scrimmage also. It ain't over until it's over the under. Go against Houston, the Buffalo offense coming off the field. Play a game, 12 men on the defense. I thought there were 12. We I was going to say that, but it sounded foolish. We also have Holy, number 67, on the offense. The penalties will offset, still first down. Ken Hall gets called for holding. The Oilers have too many men on the field again. And we get to do it again. <laughs> Kenneth Davis. They got 12 yes. out there again. Somebody's got to get off the field. They still have 12. Yeah. I think Chris Fishman's going to leave. He doesn't Look run. at this. Look at this. And he's going to take a timeout. Time oh, boy. Boy, buddy, this looks great. Uh, Chris Houston knew that he wasn't the guy that's supposed to leave. <laughs> so at least give him presence of mind for taking a timeout. That's their first charge timeout. Michael Barrow right. says, I'm not leaving. Yeah. You're, you're much better off taking a timeout than being the wrong guy to leave. What a mess.
418 remaining in the fourth quarter at Rich Stadium in Buffalo. Bills on top, 28-7. Oilers have turned the ball over six times tonight. Buffalo on its way to a mark of four and one. And tied with Miami for the top spot in the AFC East. And the Oilers are going to limp home one and four and trail Cleveland and Pittsburgh by two. First and goal as Jim Kelly goes to the air and it is dropped by Rob Awol. Tight end, second and ten. Lamar Latham seeing extensive action tonight. Had surgery on his right forearm earlier in the year. Starting to work back into the lineup. Good pass rusher on the outside. Still a number one draft choice of the Oilers back in 1990. That's Wilbur Marshall. He's making a lot of money to sit on the bench. He just can't get help. With. Kelly falls down. Davis fumbles the ball and still takes it into the end zone. A Buffalo bounce on that ball. And a terrific slashing move by Davis to get into the end zone. It's the second time this series that Jim Kelly has fallen down trying to hand the ball off. Yep. I'm not sure that this is a victory that the Bills celebrate with any did he get semblance stepped, of. Did he get stepped on here, Dan? He got pulling lineman. I think he did. Let me get another look at it. It's a fortunate bounce for Kenneth Davis that it comes right back to him. And he's in. And now for the extra point. The all important extra point. The all important extra point. Steve Christie. Yep. Boots it right over the crossbar. 35 to 7. ABC's Monday Night Football is being brought to you by the new Dodge, a division of the Chrysler Corporation. Liberty Mutual. At Liberty Mutual, we're facing the issues that face our customers. GE, from aircraft engines to appliances, we bring good things to life. And Sprint. We've got everything you need, local, long distance, and cellular, to let you be there now. Thirty-five to seven, the Buffalo Bills on top. Take a look at Kelly. He just got his foot planted by his left guard. A little slow in pulling away, but he still was able to. Get the ball out to Davis, who made a great move to get into the end zone. Tim Davis would be playing a lot more football for a lot of teams in this league if he wasn't doing such a great job backing up Thurman Thomas. Team very content with it. Former second round draft pick of the Green Bay Packers and led them in rushing. He first came into the league back in 1988. Really got to wonder what this Buffalo team is capable of accomplishing. They moved to four and one and really haven't played an outstanding football game yet. And that is the sure sign of a great team when you can win when not playing your best. Isn't that the truth? Yeah. That's John Henry Mills brings it back. You know, we haven't had a two touchdown game in how long? Pages. Up until tonight. For the offense, anyway. The. Uh, uh, from the offense, but their defenses struggled also with them. You know, the other thing about the Bills is how resilient they've been, too. You know, they lost Carlton Bailey, got a tremendous deal with the Giants. Shane Conlon went to the Rams. They fired Bill Polian, who had done such a great job here as the GM. Will Wolford, their left tackle. Right. Huge Bob loss Evans. there. Bob Ferguson, another important front office guy, went to Denver. Will Wolford, sure, to Indianapolis. Carlson. Well, you're going to have all kinds of stuff going on in Houston next week. They'll be up in arms about the coach. They'll be up in arms about the quarterback. They'll be up in arms about the defense. Only Al Del Greco will escape the fury this week. Al <laughs> Del. We got to start talking. So we can't now start those is, rumors. Right? Now this is really true. Uh, Derek, his son's name is Derek. Honest. Yep, they Derek sells it the same way. Off to the Derek. Yeah, it's a good thing he didn't get traded during because the of the Derek on the helmet. Yep, exactly. Could have called him Scratch. 
Now, if he'd have played for the Bills, what was it? Buffy, would that have been it? Or Chip? It would have been Bill. <laughs> I like that, man. Slip that right in there. <laughs> the, you're right. <laughs> Chip would have been good, yeah. <laughs> makes, oh, me. Makes sense. Oh, me. Well. Glad we're having fun there now. Yeah. yeah that has been, that's been tough to I, get through. So much I've as been, expected. I've been where they are. Third it's, down and three. It is not a fun place to be. Long ride home. And Carlson tries to gun it in and does. Gets it somehow into Haywood Jeffries. You talk to Jack Pardee about that team, and what's he say is, I've never been around a group that works harder, more dedicated, practices better. It's, it's all there right up until that three-hour time span when they're playing a game. And then it, the results aren't there. And there's another INT. And a pick by Patton, who's been all over the joint. He's either been picking them off or batting them. And it was Monty Brown, a rookie. Monty Brown who forced it. Killed Carlson. Wow, what a hit. Oh, Seven hit turnovers. Him. Monty Brown, a rookie from Ferris Bueller State. Let's look at this, a straight shot. A 230-pound rookie out of Ferris State. <laughs> he didn't take the day off, did he? <laughs> uh, we're losing. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> That's past tense. Take the thing. Three fifteen remaining. Do you smell overtime, Dan? I smell something. It's not overtime. Davis to the 39-yard line. You got Frank Reich in the game, so Kelly is done for the night. Good night for Jim. Kelly had gone uh, eight games, eight starts, including two in the playoffs last year without throwing for even 200 yards. And tonight he is at 247 and three touchdowns. Well, he's been buffeted around in the first four games. 14 sacks. That puts him up at uh, 10 touchdowns. Second down and four at the 38-yard line. And Kenneth Davis taken down by Lamar Lincoln. Ten touchdowns for Jim Kelly, five interceptions. And a type of offense they have when you've got a two-to-one touchdown to interception ratio, that's that's productive work. That's a if you can keep that going for the rest of the year, that's that's good stuff. And on the flip side, you've got Moon throwing uh, more than twice as many interceptions. Yeah. That That's for the season gives him a 5 and 11 ratio mm. going the other way. Five touchdowns and 11 interceptions. That's a better, better than 2 to 1 in the opposite direction. Two minute warning. We'll be back after this message from the National Football League. Even the. <laughs> That's being a walkway, right? I wish we had the option of leaving yeah. early. <laughs> this happy crowd exiting the uh, parking lot at Rich Stadium. Richer for the experience they were. 35 to 7. The Bills. 
Not tough. We've been very good for three. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> Just one. Lord knows they're due. Yeah. Due doesn't always get it, though, does it? Nope. Third down and four as uh, play resumes following the two-minute warning. The Buffalo Bills and the happy Bruce Smith. But I would have given to just have lost three Super Bowls. Yep. That's, isn't that the truth? That's some of the <laughs> teams around, still around this league with well, give to get there. A lot more have not been there than have been there. Frank Wright, third and four. And if they oh. and he finds that first down. Nice move. Speaking of the three championships, if you didn't hear, we'll duck in the baseball scores. The Atlanta Braves seek their third straight pennant, but they have their backs to the wall right now. How's that for turning a phrase? They lost today to Philadelphia 4-3. Len Dykstra hit a home run in the 10th inning after the Braves had rallied for three in the ninth, and the Phillies now lead that series three games to two. Strong performance by Kurt Schilling. Very strong by Kurt. <laughs> Our guy. Good, Dan. That's all I'm saying. That's it. Make him feel better. Yep. <laughs> Don't forget, next year, first game of the 94 World Series, right here on ABC. <laughs> it's the first promo. Oh, that's and uh, uh, eight o'clock uh, Eastern, eight, 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 probably. And wait till America hears Frank and I doing baseball. <laughs> yeah. Lenny, who? Uh, that's man. right. We'll add a nice new touch yep. to it, Frank. Well, our great crew, our producer Ken Wolf and director Craig Janoff, Joey Chavo, our technical director, and the gang's all here. Kirsten Anderson keeping us under control up top. George Hill, the stats. Malibu Kelly Hayes, our spotter. Peter Hurt filling in for Brother Steve, our director of research. And uh, Emily Deutsch produced the halftime. Ed McKenna, our production manager. Dennis Zabo and Jim Licata, our tech operations manager. Fred King and Margaret Schaefer, assistants to the producer. And we will take this show to the Rocky Mountains. Ooh, and it's snowing out There's there, I hear. Snowing out there in the Rockies. Can't wait. Denver is the site. Raiders, Broncos, a terrific matchup as always. Next Monday night. Well, it's all over here in Buffalo. Bills four and one. Oilers one and four. Final score is Buffalo 35 and Houston seven.